be that as it may, Carlton are firm favourites. Carlton looked good in winning the second semi-final by a margin of 36 points, and everything has gone well for them since then. The umpire for his first, fourth grand final is Jeff Crouch. The big game is underway, 100 minutes of terrific football to go. It was a Carlton win onto the half-forward line, taken here by Russell Blue, the winger for Essendon. Lost the ball to Crane, his opposite wingman. The ball is getting nowhere fast, and the umpire will intervene, I think, and bounce the ball up just on the attack side of centre. He sorted out a free kick, and it goes to Big John. Perhaps one of the greatest footballers the Victorian game has produced. Here's his high drop punt kick onto the half-forward line proper. Here's Jeselenko flashing into the play. Turns for home. A kick going in towards the goal square from here. It'll fall just short or else score a point, and the latter is the case. I think that indicated the tremendous pace of Jasolenko. He's a surprising fellow. He doesn't look as tall as he really is, but above all, he's quick in the feet and in the mind. Good kick out by Pryor, paying full back for Essendon, looking for Fletcher. The ball has knocked away from him, a chance for Crane. The boundary umpire intervenes and says he wants to throw it in. These two sides met twice during the home and home season, and Essendon were victorious on both occasions. But of course, a fortnight ago, Carlton won. Mackenzie versus Nichols. Nichols in black as it appears on a television screen. Hand pass goes smartly to Gerlach, back pocket player and interstate player for Victoria. Good kick onto the half forward line. The Bombers into attack for the first time. The ball off hands, off Barry Gill's hands and David Shaw's hands across the line. The winner here will journey to Adelaide next Saturday to play the South Australian Premiers. The match will carry $10,000 prize money. They're playing for something like $12,500 here today. Beautiful ruck work. Gallagher around the neck, his free kick. Beautiful palm straight to him from Ruckman Nichols. Gallagher gets the penalty his way and it was his way all the way. He's on the centre wing, drives it up towards centre half forward. A chance for Gerlach, he was too tall for his opposing row, but he couldn't pick it up. Falling over with Bennett, knocked the ball out here towards Quirk, having a lot of trouble picking it up. They're all pretty nervous out there today as umpire Crouch puts a whistle to his mouth and says, I'll ball it up only 40 yards away from the Carlton goal. Essendon have won 12 VFL premierships and Carlton 8. Here they go into the fray again. It's Carlton into attack. They have the ball on their forward line. It's Darrell Gerlach turning his shoulder into a fella coming downfield at a great rate of knots and he can move this bloke here is Robertson one of the best players in the league make no mistake about it courage plays a tremendously important part in this game the VFL grand final from Melbourne it's on the MCG Mecca for the game in Victoria left foot kick by Silvani onto the half forward line got over Kekovic the full forward out comes Ellis bravely goes in for that ball runs into his own man in Ellis Ellis turns against the tide boots the ball for the line as a good defender should it's falling towards three Carlton fellas and the third one in Robertson gets hold of it has to surrender it now to Davis, heady work there, gives it to Fletcher Fletcher gets them out of trouble, got them out of a real tight spot, the ball is onto the centre wing, falling for Croswell, Croswell's only a 17 or 18 year older and he runs into two sturdy fellas one was Noonan, the ball's gone to Ellis, hand pass over there, falls into the wrong man's territory, Barry Gill runs the ball out and tempers are getting a bit short up to date it's Carlton that are winning the ball but everybody's unsettled not a great deal of purpose there's a knock by Nichols, but I think he has infringed and the free kick will go against him and will be taken by Mackenzie who played on but the and you'll find that umpire Crouch using his great experience to advantage won't allow it and McKenzie will be allowed to take this free kick which is the correct thing to do. We've had five minutes of football in the first quarter of the 1968 grand final and there are some grand final nerves being shown by Macca as the Essendon captain boots the ball out and uh, overlook one of the fundamentals of the game and that is keep your eye on the ball. Here he is now for the knockout against number two, John Nichols. And Big John gets in front, takes the ball out of the air, runs straight into Gosper. Gosper won't let him go. Gosper takes the ball off him. The ball, I think, was uh, appealed for as being out, but it wasn't. Out comes Lost Gamely, but he misses the ball. In goes Barry Gill to help him out. The ball has come towards Lost again. He overruns it, sees Gill overrun it. Here's Bleffin having his first kick in league football. It might be a goal! on behalf of the uh, on the part of the Carlton defence Lofts went in there had a big boot at it there was no purpose and, and no design whatsoever and ultimately the the only cool player in the vicinity did what had to be done he kicked a goal and he's 17 years of age matriculation student there's a knock there by Payne no decisive knockdown now it comes out here kicked down by Croswell down towards the half forward line Quirk is there and Davis the two number 32 remember their battle a fortnight ago Davis wins on this occasion up towards the half forward line Barry Gill Gets away from his opponent, Teddy Fordham. Fordham might have had umpire Crouch will run over to number 20 of Essendon. 
Here he goes now to tell him that he cannot knock his opponent after he has delivered the ball, and you'll find a free kick going further downfield. Goal is a tremendous psychological lift for Essendon. You could literally see them lift themselves. They are a little bit different, even at this point of time. Brian Quirk, one of the heady players on this half-forward line for the Carlton side, kicking the ball over the line. But he at least gained 60 yards in length. The wind is really swirling around this huge arena, and it seems to be snowing at times. So thick in some quarters is the, the paper, the confetti. Is a throw in. Jones onto the ball now, number 28 against Mackenzie, 24, who has no respite. Jones takes Nichols' place, and Mackenzie got up high to overcome a six inches disadvantage. And the ball is to Gosper. He kicks into the center of the ground, and Essendon into attack again. A chance now for Newman as he dwells on the ball, flicks it across there with a left hand over towards Blue. Blue gets grabbed around the neck. Should be a free kick against Gould. It's not. The ball is taken by Kevin Hall. It comes back into the center. Carlton Mark there through Adrian Gallagher, their talented left foot rover. He kicks right into the man storming upfield against him. It was Mackenzie. Mackenzie he follows up against Croswell. Croswell, meanwhile, was fouled by Ellis, and it's his free kick. Bad luck for Essendon. They had the break there. Mackenzie had the run of the ball. Croswell it is, another 17-year-old student. Kicks it down towards centre-half forward, but unfortunately for him, straight into the hands of Gosper. Essendon's first row at centre-half back. After seven minutes of play, Essendon a one goal, Carlton a one point. A six points to one, and it's a good mark. Backing in the centre of the ground by Alan Noonan. Plays on quickly when he sees the lead coming out from the forward pocket from Fletcher. The red-headed Fletcher gets up, but he allows it to bounce, and the bounce will take it away. And Fletcher knocks it back towards Blatton as Wesloffs and also... Uh, Quirk getting the ball down towards the centre wing, a chance now for Gosper, the ball eluded him, went away from him, following up as Davis, Davis and Quirk, with the check it in, but it was illegitimate, and a free kick will be taken by Barry Davis. Davis is one of the best kicks in this game of ours, and there's his high punt kick. The wind is really creating some problems with their judgment, as there, Loft seemed to have the ball on his chest, and it was spilled. Sturdy defence work, and uh, the ball has gone out of play. We're making errors. It's Carlton that appear to be the nervous team at this particular time. Throw in, half forward line. Essendon into attack. Nichols again supreme in the ruck. A double hand to knock down to this area. A few backhanders flying around there. Mackenzie's in the middle of it. A free kick going to Fordham. Fordham has won a kick on the half forward line and is anxious to get the ball back into play. It's the method of play that these days. It's the pattern to keep the ball moving. Into the full forward area it goes. Falling short and Collins should mark and play on. Gets the run. Close too late and running him down. However, it's not to closes to spread it, the ball has gone up here and Quirk has taken the mark and he'll play on too. Ryan Quirk of Carlton kicks the ball into attack, it's just over the centre line, now it's gone back the other way, Essendon into attack, bounces off Quirk's forehead, it looked like, towards Fletcher, Fletcher keeps the ball going, but going Carlton's way, over towards Gerlach, that was his method. Gerlach takes the ball, kicks it high in the air, and it's only gained about 15 yards. Payne couldn't mark. It's hard to judge marks with this win. The ball is picked up here by Sproul. Sproul kicks the ball forward. It's onto the half-forward line. Noonan coming out to meet it. Gets a chance now. Turns back into the pack. He ran into two. Gillen Gould. Well, they hit a bit harder than they're hitting. If they're to unbalance this uh, Essendon side, it's got to be by the application of physical force. There's the kick by Gould. Three kicks are five to three in favour of Carlton. A mark being paid out there in that centre half forward position to Ian Robertson, a very talented winger for the Carlton side. We've had uh, nine minutes of play in the fifth quarter. There's the kick by Robertson. Oh, the wind's grabbed hold of it, brought it across, and John Ellis, the Essendon centre player, very quickly seized the opportunity, played on quickly, runs across the centre of the ground, a magnificent step pass, goes into the top and close, the ball is knocked away by uh, Hall. Hall going again, it comes back to Ellis. Oh, a beautiful piece of work by Ellis, but he's still running around, gets away from trouble, and has found Robin close on the half forward flank. He turns, drives up towards full forward, and it's all Carlton, and the mark has been taken down there by Robert Walls, another youngster. Essendon lead, they have one goal on the board, Carlton have one point. Five points separate the sides in the ten-minute area of the first quarter. The ball is kicked to the half-back line. Noonan slow in getting up there, and the mark is comfortably taken by Dennis Munari, who was out in the second semi-final because of an injured knee, which is still bandaged. The ball comes down to Brent Croswell. There are a couple of youngsters playing well. The ball is taken by Blue, loses it, slung off his feet. The ball has come out towards Munari, went for a slip. That wouldn't have helped his knee injury. The ball is across the line right in front of him now. It's obvious that the end to which Carlton are kicking is not the scoring end. The ball is dropping, and time after time, the man in front has got the, the mark because it drops short. Noonan going into the ball and has it kicked out of his hands by his own player, his own captain, McKenzie. The ball comes to Gould. Gould a dasher always, and a good equestrian man. Kicks the ball into the half-forward line. Can anybody mark from here? It's over their heads again. Valiant tried by Bennett. 
Also an attempt by Jesselenko. The ball is out right in front of the Essendon Brains Trust. Let's go into close up there. Missing captain Ken Fraser, one of the all-time greats in the game in the light-coloured uh, coat. Ball thrown in, out through injury. What a disappointment. Would have made 200 games and ended probably on a premiership note. Funari with the ball runs right back into Evans and uh, it's either a push in the back or holding the ball. It's a push in the back. Yes, that's got the way to tackle an opponent, and Dennis Minari has the free kick. The marks are six to four in favour of Calvin, and not a very good kick, falling short, or great attempt to mark by Kekovic, but it's across the line. The scoreboard says that Calvin are one point, Essendon a one goal, which is six points at the ten-minute mark in this first quarter. Throw in only 25 yards away from the Carlton goal, a knock by Evans, a chance for Essendon. Getting them out of trouble is Williams. There's talented centre half back, a good long kick out towards the half wall. David draws up too much space for Barry Gill but on his hammer. Beautiful play, good footwork. Got it round his opponent. Short pass, which wasn't very good, but it's effective. Find his teammate Fletcher. Fletcher back towards full forward position. Wes Loft is there. Has the ball knocked away, but the mark has been allowed for loss. What a big job being put on Blethyn to handle Loss, one of the hardest hitting fullbacks in the caper. Lost a strong kick and the wind seemed to aid that. It's difficult, however, to tell from which particular point of the compass the wind is coming. Here's Jesselink onto the centre of the ground. He's tackled by two. Mackenzie and Fordham. He still wins out. Keeps the ball going for him. Got a helping hand with a push in the back and it's his free kick at centre half forward. Jesselinko, one of the popular favourites in the game and certainly an outstanding member of this Carlton lineup. Carlton's last premiership win was 21 years ago in 1947, a long time to remember. And the Essendon premiership success last time was 1965. There's a kick by Jesselenko, the boy from Canberra. Kicks it out towards the half-world, unlooking for Kanker, which the ball's knocked away from him, a chance for Nichols. Oh, Evans is there. I think he might be across the line, might be a free kick going to go. No, says the umpire, throw it in. It's only 30 yards away from the Carlton goal. They still trail by five points. Here we see Nichols, number two, against Evans. Neil Evans, number 36. No decisive knockdown off the hand of the pack. Comes out here towards Crane. Crane steady. He's a left foot snap by Crane. Up towards Pekovic. Well, oh, Pekovic is touched. Has he not? No, he didn't. Goal. Well, the fortunes of football. No worries about it that Pekovic tried to grab the ball and tried to touch it. And luckily for their side, the Carlton side, he didn't. And the right angle break got the first major on the board for the Blues. Former great uh, ruckman Jim Taylor commenting on GTV Channel 9 Melbourne at the MCG, one of the great sporting arenas, which uh, could be filled today with an all-time Australian sporting record in attendance. The ball under the half-forward line walls, a clever piece of work over here to Crane, who did the damage before, kicks under the half-forward line. Good uh, defence work there by Williams, knocked the ball down, but Robertson gathers it in. Here's his stab pass going forward, but it'll hold out to the wrong man. Bad luck for Pryor, he dropped the mark when it came whistling onto his chest. The umpire in the meantime has intervened and will bounce the ball up only about 15 yards from the goal square, which therefore is perilously close to the Carlton goals. Essendon will have to stand two again. That uh, helps them out uh, a good deal. Evans got the ball across there. Here it is on the half the back line for them. And they'll break away from here. As Fordham kicking the ball forward onto the half forward line. Down to meet it is closed and he takes a fine mark. He was given a bit of rough treatment there by Hall, but he held onto the mark well, and that ground's pretty hard. Certainly is. The curator said he watered it yesterday. We've had no rain in Melbourne for a week. There's the kick by Robin Close, falling short into the goal square. Black and in front. Yes, good work, youngster. This is only his second league game. An incredible move by the Essendon selectors when Ken Fraser, their captain, was not fit. They put this bloke not only in the side, but in the key full forward position for his first kick in this grand final. What a baptism. He kicked a goal, and here he is with a chance to kick his second goal from straight in front. Blatham gets his second from two kicks. Sensational play by number 11 for the Bombers. Well, what could have been a big gamble by the Essendon selectors in the playing of Blatham looks as though it has already paid off. There's Captain Ken Fraser, how must he feel, and Jack Clark on his right. Blatham has kicked two goals in the first 15 minutes of play. That's a good start, and the selectors must feel happy with themselves. Well, who'll be cheered off the arena after the, the next 100 minutes? Will it be Jack Clark or Ron Barassi, the rival coaches? That was Mackenzie falling down, and he's hurt himself. He fell, he wasn't touched, and he's slow in getting to his feet. The ball, meantime, has gone to Carlton's half-forward line. Here comes Croswell into the play. Gallagher picks it up. He's bumped fairly by Eppis. Got a real bump. He runs right past Fordham. Then he's tackled by Ellis, but still wins his kick. Mackenzie's back on his feet. The three trainers are looking after him as the ball has been marked here by Gerlach. Can we see Mackenzie? 
McKenzie in the center of the ground. McKenzie is now okay. The ball coming towards his area now, but I tell you what, he was shaken up. It's him against Jones. He falls right on top of Jones, but it is Mark, and he seems to leave, <laughs> leave his trademark right in the middle of Jones' back. Jones didn't appreciate the idea either. Jones has it. Got a very good kick, pretty high in the air, extend a half forward. No knockdown, but there's a chance for Alice to get Essendon out of trouble. A short pass, and this will be telling, but chipping in is Johnny Gould. Got in front of Alan Noonan. Two great footballers, Alan Noonan and Gould, and it'll be an interesting clash there today. Gould has it on good kick. Up towards centre half forward. Seems to run into a brick ball. The ball is knocked away. Picked up there by Gary Crane. Down towards full forward. Runs away from Nichols. Bounces to out towards Mekovic. That's number 16. Can he keep it in play? Might get a free kick. Kekovic grabbed around the neck. That is number 16, Brian Kekovic. Well, scores are few and far between in this uh, first 15 minutes of the first quarter. Essendon two goals, Carlton one goal one. The record grand final score is to Essendon, who kicked 150 points against Melbourne in 1946. The score was 22-18. They're a long way from that at the moment. There's a screw kick by Kekovic. It's a brilliant performance. I'll tell you what, he only just missed it. See how he dropped that ball right across the instep? It was a boomerang kick, and it just failed to come off. Tony, it's one that must be tried when you're on such an acute angle and all your men are picked up. Uh, a for effort, but bad luck for the result. Prior kicking the ball off, he is the fullback. Brown not fit to take his place in the side this time. The ball towards um, you know, Croswell. Croswell is bumped hard by the opposite number 17 in Gerlach. It allows Robertson to chip in, kicks the ball well forward, and the mark is taken by Pryor, playing in front of Kekovic, and Kekovic roughed him up there a bit, and the umpire is going to have a few words to say with him. So too is number 24, the Essendon captain, McKenzie, and there's quite a bit of fun going on here, and finally the umpire comes in with Adrian Gallagher. Fun on games, finals, nerves, call it what you like, but I don't care what they do because this is what you've played for all the year and you'll do anything to win if you really fire for the team. The three kicks are eight to three in favour of Carlton. There's a kick by Pryor, covering plenty of distance out to the centre wing. A mark to Barry Davis, nose as the umpire, play on. Oh, Fletcher, tons of pace. Well shepherded ball by his teammate, gets up towards full forward, Black and behind and he's got it! by this boy kicked off the ground by Ian Collins of Carlton. Carlton are playing in the black nets, Essendon in the white. Jim Taylor has something to say about number 11 who's providing a sensation here at the MCG, young Jeff Blethen. Tremendous try, but I would, wouldn't get carried away about the umpire not giving the mark because it wasn't. Clearly, I wake up to yourself. <laughs> it was kicking towards the goal square, and as this Carlton mark is taken pretty comfortably there by Ian Collins, who's a very nuggety performer. Collins right in the back pocket goes back through the behind post to get distance for his kick out kicks it for the line on the outer side he's defending the Richmond goal and the ball is straight out of play the scoreboard reads Essendon two goals Carlton one goal two the goal kicker for Essendon Blethen two and for Carlton Crane one the marks are to Essendon eight and ten to Carlton the Ruckman Evans number 36 Jones number 28 Carlton win the knockout give it straight down to Munari good ruck play they're doing well in the ruck the ball's kicked back into the center two Carlton men are showing out against the others trying to kick it off the ground and failing there was Croswell. Bad luck for him. If he'd connected, it would have kicked uh, uh, kicked it out of the stadium. The ball has been picked up here by Robertson, given a free kick. Yes, he was grabbed by his opponent. He didn't have the ball. A short pass coming across towards uh, was Kekovic and also Bennett. Bennett was number 12, knocked away by Fletcher, out towards Gospel. Gospel's got a tackle by Ian Robertson. Kicks it high in the air. Oh, uh, he has picked it. Free kick. Not a penalty free kick's been given. And this one will be taken by Charlie Payne of Essendon. On the centre wing, drives it up towards full forward, Blethen and Loss. Chance here for Carlton's Robert Walls to get him out of trouble. The umpire says he was pushed in the back, free kick to Robert Walls. Blethen already has kicked two goals, but he certainly proved one thing. This boy, I saw him play his first league game, and he didn't give any indication that he can fly like he can, and he's gone up like a Boeing 707 on a couple of occasions and unluckily not brought the ball down and it's no free kick it's a throw in. No it's not I still say it's a free kick you wake up Jimmy you've got to watch the game. Well I was watching the umpire and I was going along with the boundary man. Kiss <laughs> for Pat. Well it's taken by Walls, tall and rangy and with a lot of experience under his been given an extra 15 yard advantage because uh, they wrapped him up a bit and here's his kick going into attack and it's a good strong punt kick Nichols for wasn't able to mark stretch one hand up 
Charlie Payne couldn't bring the ball out of that pack and it goes forward Carlton's way rescued back to the half back line down in front is the rover Gallagher Gallagher kicks the ball back towards Ephesus again up goes Big John second bite it's not his the ball has come out here towards Crane kicked a goal earlier Carlton's only goal so far we played the best part of 20 minutes into the first quarter and Crane wins himself a free kick aided by the wind which seems to be favoring the, the western end he might be able to score from here it's as near as it down it it's gone in towards the goal square free kick is sorted out must be there's a push in the back being signaled by the umpire and the free kick goes to Essendon's Jeff Cryer who is their full back 11 free kicks to Carlton five to Essendon Cryer's kick falls short but Russell Blue is there and he will be paid the mark because his opponent train was pretty late on the scene might have got a free kick anyway it is the kick by Russell Blue up towards the centre wing Hall pushed his opponent in the back good decision umpire Crouch Robin Close is the recipient of the free kick Carlton are making a lot of unnecessary errors they're not tackling with anywhere near the the vigour that they did on the last occasion in which these sides played they've lapsed into error there's a bad sin the Cardinal sent a football to kick India Panda on the mark and Hall has kicked it off the ground Alec Eppes says there he's got the hand pass it across towards Williams Williams having trouble picking the ball up he's got it on the third occasion there's his drop kick wide towards the wing there's a chance now for Ian Robertson to pick it up on his hammer is Fletcher being shepherded called by Barry Gill he left puts it down towards the half forward line Quirt might get to it he, the ball bounces back in the play but now it's across the line the scoreboard Essendon are two goals, which is 12 points, and Carlton are one goal, too, which is eight, and we are 21 minutes into the first quarter. Neither side has any definite advantage, but Essendon appear to be settled down quick more or quicker, and they are helping each other. Beautiful knock by Nichols, taken away by Munari, down towards the half-forward line, picked up on the run here by Quirk, a hand pass coming down here. Oh, but chipping in brilliantly as Williams playing well at centre-half back, it's his fifth kick, goes out in the mark, once more to Carlton's Dennis Munari. Well, the game's pretty quiet so far. It's a battle of defenders. Not too much excitement, but I tell you what, it will soon generate. Getting up high was Bennett. Got a foot in the back of McKenzie, who didn't appreciate that. Those stop marks hurt. The ball is coming up to Crane. He's been doing very well on his wing. Heady play there. Gives the ball to Gallagher, who's roaming in the centre on his own. His kick is going right across the half-forward line in front of the member's stand. It's close to goal. There's Jezelenko a chance here. He's in front of Pryor, but it's a free kick behind play to Kekovic, who certainly is showing a bit of fiery temperament down there and is wanting to have everybody on. I think, Tony, you'd be better to set down he's got his claws to a few uh, a, a few marks and he hasn't retained them they need someone up there to grab a mark Carlton above all somebody has to start marking for them and soon football's hot gospeler Alan Killigrew former coach of North Melbourne and St Kilda commenting on Channel 9 is Kekovic from a long way out uses beautifully a punt kick a beautiful kick from 50 yards out at least and it flew through like a gazelle once again it indicates the advantages of having a a balanced shot at goals. It, everybody's been running around like various people at fires, and that was the one deliberate shot, and you get a goal. Carlton now lead by two points. They're two goal kickers, one each to Crane and Kekovic, and Blethen has kicked both goals for Essendon. At the 23-minute mark, it's two goals to two goals, two with Carlton leading by two points. Carlton in front by two points, and that's a very narrow margin. It missed Nichols completely, and it was knocked down by Noonan there, who's come onto the ball, evidently. It goes to Gosper, kicks towards Fletcher, very nearly held that mark. Robertson goes for Catherine Wheel. The ball out here towards Gosper, who somehow got back onto his feet and kept up the chase. His kick is going into the full forward area. Up goes Blethen again, got a foot in West Lost back. And Lost is still looking at the umpire. I think that really hurt. wants to stay 10 yards in front of this lad this boy will use his back to climb upon the way to play him is to stay close and biff him what do you mean by that legitimately of course because he's a thin boy he can spring <coughs> Ian Robertson it is with the ball on the halfback flank a good towering torpedo fun kick 65 to 70 yards down towards half forward Williams try to one-hander Barry Davis his halfback flanker to help him but it's across the line in addition to the VFL Premiership pennant, Carlton and Essendon today are competing for the lion's share of the $10,000 uh, remaining to be won in the WD and HO Wills bonus awards. Total amount, $12,500. Well, that was Nichols again, straight down to his rover. Clever play. It's as if there's radar operating between them over towards Croswell. Couldn't mark that one. Coming in strongly as Crane again. He's spread eagle this time. The ball's picked up here by, by Fordham, giving a hand pass to Davis. The back line is working nicely. That half-back line. It's kicked onto the forward line. Robin Close is in front of his man, who manhandled him anyhow. Free kick to Robin Close. He uh, kicks the ball straight over Gould's head. It's over Noonan's head too. 
And out here, roaring around is David Shaw. Left foot kick into the full forward pocket for Blethen, who showed plenty of enthusiasm, but had no chance of gaining possession of the ball. I think David Shaw would be a much better footballer if he chooses his other foot. I'm not quite certain he is a left foot kick, but he kicks 90% balls with his left foot. Nichols, beautiful knockdown to Ian Collins, waiting on his own there. Gets his kick down towards the half-back line. Chance for Brent Coswell, but in chips at Teddy Fordham. Hanging around the centre, comes out to Jessalenko. Hand pass across to Coswell. Good football, and what a very good kick. Could find Bennett. Bennett's pushed in the back by his opponent. Williamson will take the free kick, and the free kicks are 13 to 7 in favour of Carlton. Two sides with great traditions in VFL football. The Blues and the Dons are playing up the grand final 1968 here. Essendon finished on top of the list after the home and away series. They ran into a, a black day against this same side, Carlton, in the second semi-final. They meet them again today for the grand final. The ball is again out of play and a repeat of the last effort. Essendon won the first premiership in 1897. Coach Ron Barassi of the Carlton side working overtime on that telephone communication to his men on the bench, on the on the field of play. Over here towards Fordham, grabbed late by Silvani, the umpire allows a play on, the ball is picked up here, who uh, attempted to be picked up by Fordham, gets it across to Blue, he runs right back into Silvani, can't get rid of the ball, the umpire should bounce it here, I think. No penalty awarded, the ball is to be bounced up on the half-forward line for the Carlton team, still going to the Western Stand goal. The scoreboard at the 25-minute mark, so we're playing time on now, is Carlton ahead by two points, in go the big men, they fly over to Nichols, clever handball on his hands and knees, straight here to Crane. Crane is one of the outstanding Carlton players in this first quarter. Over here to the half-forward line, a gallant attempt to mark by big Peter Jones. He's six feet six. The ball is spilled off hands. It's into the crowd. This is the fifth meeting of these sides in a grand final. Each side having won two on previous occasions. 25 minutes into this first quarter. 2-2 two -two to two goals. Carlton lead by two points as the ball is cleared by Gosper once more across the line. The goal kickers for Essen and a two to Blethen. Carlton, one to Crane and one to Kekovic. Scoreboard again, two goals, two to Carlton. Essendon, two goals. 14 points to 12. The Blues on top by two points with one minute of time on now gone in the first quarter. Nichols, hand pass coming out towards Gallagher. Gallagher have to hurry, he's under the hammer. Play on says the umpire, Ellis gives it across to Eppers who slipped over and then he hand passed across to McKenzie. McKenzie's kick, not a very good one. Missed by Silvani, missed by Dool. Silvani knocks it back towards Dool and that's pretty good football. And Gallagher's taking a long time to get up off the ground as Dool. That's Gallagher. Dool down towards full forward. Bounces away. Dennis Minari's got it. Bounces it. Grabs says the umpire. Play on. Still Dennis Minari plays on. Now he's going to short pass it across towards the half line looking for Kekovic but Jeff Dreyer is there. Worried about Adrian Gallagher. He seemed to slip over and stretch out. He did something um, like a splits, and uh, he's in the hands of two trainers. The ball is marked by Fletcher on the centre wing. He is the Essendon winger and a very speedy customer, one of the fastest players in the game. Here's his drop punt kick going straight to the centre of the ground where Fordham takes the mark. Should have played on. He could have been well shepherded for by Evans, who knew uh, by Ellis, who knew what was going on. The ball is kicked forward. Well forward into the full forward area. Here's Hall juggling for the ball. Barassi's come down off his, uh, his crow's nest and is going down under the field of play. They must be worried about Adrian Gallagher or else the communications have fallen through again. A left foot snapshot by Robin Close, I think it was, is going to score one point. And that's the first blemish, if it is a blemish, on the Essendon scoreboard. That's their first behind. They have 2-1, Carlton 2-2. The difference is one point. 13 to 9 on the marks in favour of the Blues. And the free kicks, Essendon have had eight and Carlton have had 14. Waiting on Wes Loss. 14 stone seven, six foot two and a half, 25 years of age. And there's his kick, not a very good one on this occasion. Bounces it back from uh, Robertson, picked up by Nichols. Nichols out here towards Barry Gill. Barry Gill's got away from two opponents. He'll have to hurry. He hand passes a long one over here towards Croswell. Croswell has the ball knocked away by Blue. Blue picks it up out towards the half-forward line, chipping in, trying to mark him in the second bite. Was Fletcher, but helping him is Ellis. Ellis, a short pass up here towards the forward line, but it's over the line. We've had three minutes of time on in the first quarter. Ron Barassi leaving the members' enclosure, evidently to go down onto the field of play and sit on the bench inside the fence communications problems it seems to be although it uh, was coincidental that as soon as Adrian Gallagher his top rover was injured he left for the quarter time talk Tony uh, he's got a couple of minutes to talk to his boys Pinky coming out here for Carlton is Robert and he's Hal didn't have the ball he saved the free kick Quirk it was Quirk up towards the forward pocket looking for Kekovic oh Kekovic bundled Pryor out of the road but Pryor's got the recovery power beautiful play by Pryor Kicks it wide towards the centre of the ground, and it's a Carlton mark, and it's Robert Walls. 
Gives it across here towards Minari. Minari back towards Ian Robertson. That's good football. Oh, a very bad pass coming up here. The ball's knocked away by Bennett. Falls into the hands of Tekovic. A short pass coming up here towards Bennett once more. Gets a left foot to it. It's smothered and it's over the line. It's still one point the difference. Carlton lead 14 points to 13. The record attendance at this ground is 115,802. They saw the grand final of 1956 between Melbourne and Collingwood. The capacity for the ground has been improved now to 125,000 by that western stand, which is just to the right of where the play is at the moment. They think that it's a record attendance today. Carlton straight down to Croswell. Good play by him. A left foot kick and it falls for Gallagher. And Gallagher, injured earlier, just spills the mark and the umpire calls a play on. Williams comes down to meet the ball. Number 22 for the Bombers. Kicks the ball to the halfback flank. There's a mark here taken by Robertson. He'll keep the pressure right on those Don's defenders. It's nearly quarter time. 30 minutes of play. That's 25 minutes of actual time plus five minutes of time on. Is Ian Robertson's kick. And it's a beautiful drop kick. 65 yards up towards full forward. Evans and his knocks the ball away. 30 yards at the quarter time siren sounds. And you'll find that Essendon at two goals, one thirteen. Carlton at two goals, two fourteen. With a deficit of one point. Positional changes. John Nichols, number two, in the ruck for Carlton against number 24, McKenzie for Essendon. Here we go. Here goes Nichols for no decisive knockdown, but Gallagher was picking up that bounce, grabbed it down towards the half-forward line, falling for Bennett, and Bennett has marked at the centre half-forward for Carlton. One of the few occasions that he has got away from Williams, judged the flight of the ball better. This is only his second kick, Williams has had seven. It's a long way out from goal. There's a long torpedo, punt kick falling into the goal square over the head of the pack. Daryl Gerlach grabbed the ball before it went across the line and kicked it out of bounds, no score. I don't agree with Jeff Leake that it was Essendon's quarter because I feel that the way the ball dropped when Carlton were kicking towards goal that the wind didn't favour their end, it's favouring this Richmond end. Only this quarter will tell and uh, perhaps it's just two even sides on an even day with the wind. Even Stevens. Good play by Barry Davis, got a hand pass out there somehow, threaded the eye of an towards Gerlach, was pushed in the back by Quirk, the umpire said it was in the side and called play on. Quirk having to go a long way before he can get his kick. The ball has rebounded off uh, Davis, who's getting a free kick, and is against Quirk. Because Quirk ran too far with the ball. You're supposed to only run 10 yards. Well, he ran about 15 or 20. Sproul, who was tackling him at the time, gets the kick, and from the halfback line, he kicks to the centre wing. In front, not able to take the mark as Charlie Payne, as Robertson picking the ball up from behind the pack, kicks the ball into attack. Carlton attacking more consistently than Essendon. Right over Jessalenko's shoulder there was Alec Eppis. The ball has come out here towards Sproul. Eppis alongside him, gets a hand pass, bounces it once. He's going to bounce it again, I think. No, decides to get it under his left boot and just as well. He was being run down quickly. The ball under the half-forward line. Collins a long way away from the back pocket where he's minding the resting rover. Springboards into the attack and boots the ball well forward. Essendon's defence is being sorely tested here. They've got a good half-back line. Here it is functioning nicely. Half-back flanker gives it to centre-half-back in Williams. The ball is here onto the centre wing where Noonan was in front, but he spilled the mark. He was buffeted from behind. Another left foot kick by Crane. Crane's won himself a bundle so far. The ball is taken by Big John Nichols. A thumping kick goes into the full forward area where it falls straight into the arms of Pryor. Crane has had seven <laughs> kicks. Blue has had three. I tell you what, it's no wonder that Pryor's been in Kekovic. He's been in front and that's the way to be. Nichols couldn't mark it, but it's picked up by Crane once more up towards the half forward line. He's found Jessalenko, who was in front of Eppers on this occasion. Jessalenko had a one flashing bit of play in the first quarter, but he's been pretty quiet since. A star half forward in the Victorian Football League since he came from Canberra. We expect big things of him, and he very seldom, if ever, lets us down. There's a very poor kick up towards the forward line. Kekovic in front, bundled out of the road. I think the umpire will ball it up. I don't think he'll give a free kick. I'd agree with the decision for a ball up because Gallagher helped make it around the neck by ducking his head and running into a wall of Essendon players. One point the difference. Carlton lead in the 1968 Premiership race as Gallagher having difficulty picking up the ball. He shakes off Gerlach. That was a clever piece of work. Oh, a hook shot over his head. It's close to scoring. Hit the post. Bad luck, Gags, because it deserved a goal for the effort that he put into it. A goal at this stage becomes contagious and it lifts the team and both sides are struggling to get one. When they do, what's them fire? Williams couldn't quite mark the ball, bounced off his hands, a chance for Fletcher. Fletcher's winning on his wing, kicks it down, it's bounced away from Barry, there's a chance for David. 
David Shaw. He's eight or ten yards in front, but he waited for the bounce. Barry Gill gets to him. David Shaw picks it up, slams down towards the goal square. Lost in front. Experience versus you. Amplified your point earlier, Killer, as if he plays close to the boy, he's got too much strength. Instead of giving him a, a, the use of his own back as a stepladder for the high springer, and there was a classical example of good thinking for the old Alan Killer group. The ball is kicked short here by Lofts. Ellis keeps up the pressure, kicks the ball right down the throat of the full forward area. They're racing for the ball pretty hard here, but they can't make possession of it. Essendon getting a bit upset as Fordham racing in for the ball. He jumped right on top of the Carlton boy and Walls. Walls is trying to get himself out of uh, this trouble, trying to extricate himself. Fordham is spoken to by umpire Crouch for a bit of unduly rough play. There's to be a bounce up on the half forward line. In they fly for it again as Nichols doing giant things in the ruck. Ball has gone onto the centre wing forward by Russell Blue onto the half forward line a chance for Shaw again he's playing in front but Gill took it off him and gave it straight down to Walls who then ran right back into Shaw free kick against number 42 of Carlton for being caught with the ball in his possession taken by David Shaw he's about 55 maybe 60 yards out now he'd only be 50 to 55 on a very acute angle the ball falls short in front of the goals attempted mark or by Noonan Ball has the ball grab play on says the umpire stacks on the mill as number 19 Robin Post gets bundled out of the road off the pack of the chance for two Western players and we see Fordham give it across towards uh, uh, to Blethen he wasn't ready for that big John Nichols gets Carlton out of trouble and it's bounced up towards the centre and there's a chance for Croswell good youngster caught with it beautiful piece of handball over here towards Eppes Eppes gets out of trouble and Essendon is down towards the centre wing position where we see uh, Prowl, give it across towards Charlie Payne. A long hand pass going to Noonan. Noonan steadies, shoots it down towards the goal square. Going right across the, the boundary line, no score. Only two points the difference in the scores. Carlton lead by two points, 2-3 two, to 2-1. Two, We've played for six minutes into the second quarter. There's been nothing in it since the game started over 35 minutes ago. It's been a battle of the defenders. Not too much excitement, not too, much, too many highlights as yet, but they're settling, settling into their gate now. As Shaw wins himself another kick, up the left boot again, it's out of play. Well, you're right about settling, Tony. First quarters in finals, even semi-finals, seem to be a lot of mistakes, but players gradually settle down and become accustomed to the job and also to the crowd, and this is happening now. Throw in only five yards away from the Essendon goal, Nichols tried to take it out of the air, and Collins couldn't grab it, but across the line once more. 2-1 to 2-3, so Carlton lead by two points, at the six or seven minute mark in this second quarter and there's Nichols once more against McKenzie Nichols dominating, his knock goes straight into hands of an Essendon player in noon and he couldn't pick it up Collins has got it gets uh, his kick right across towards the half-back line trying to fly high and mark it was Russell Blue Silvani can't grab it across the line Blethen has kicked two goals for Essendon and Crane and Kekovic one each for Carlton another throw in on the half forward flank this time, this time Peter Jones knocks it. Oh, good piece of work there by Robin Post. Come down here towards Sproul, but he didn't pick the ball up on his way through. Chance now as we see uh, Robin Post once more going for it. It's number 19 for Essendon. Essendon in the white Knicks, Carlton in the black Knicks. Essendon recovered from their second semi-final slump against Carlton by scoring an impressive 24-point win over Geelong in last week's preliminary final. That got them into the grand final to have another crack at Essendon, uh, a crack at Carlton. Russell Blue, oh, he bounced right off them, got out of their grasp, kicks the ball across the half-forward line, Barry Gill is doing well, loses the ball only momentarily before run down by Ellis, but he's won his kick, the ball has gone here and it's bouncing as though it's uh, hitting concrete because the ground is very, very firm. The ground is almost rock hard. It's interesting to note at the moment that Serge Sultani is taking his time to pick his man up, um, and if the ball gets down in a hurry, Carlton could be in trouble. Charlie Payne tripped right over Jones's feet and fell in front of him. The ball has come towards Big John. Gets a hand pass there. It looked suspect. Looked like a bit of a throw over towards Crane. Crane turns left, circles, a left foot kick across the half forward line, falling awkwardly there for Williams. It beat him and went straight over there towards Munari. Munari's kick is well forward and the mark is. Well, that illustrates my point. It was no wonder that he was being beaten because Pryor had the front position. If Kekovic makes the front position, he'll get the result as he did then. Carlton two goals three, lead Essendon two goals one by two points. It's 15 to 13. Kekovic a chance to score a goal from 45 yards out and straight in front. Beautifully executed off the left boot and straight down the alley. Two goals for Brian Kekovic and Carlton now go to three goals three. Essendon are two goals one. Both full forwards have kicked two goals. And there's many chances for Kekovic if he gets front position. 
Well, I hope you people are right that these people are these players are nervous because up to date for mine, at the, as far as the game con is concerned, it's still warm. 3-3 to 2-1 now. It's Carlton leading strongly and playing strongly as Croswell kicks the ball or knocks it right under the half forward line. Good hand pass from Adrian Gallagher over to Kekovic. Sandwich gets out of it and boots a goal. That was worth a goal and for the first time for a long time the crowd really and truly left their seats. It took a lot of courage to do what Kekovic did just then. Brian Quirk couldn't quite handle the ball. Ian Robertson's got it, the hand pass coming out. It was Robert Walls. Robert Walls hand pass it back towards Quirk. Quirk was going to be tackled by Ellis. Gets his kick, a short pass going across towards the half forward line. The mark is taken by Gary Crane. There's an Essendon player down up in the goal square. Alec Eppis. Alec Eppis is down. He's playing his last game of league football. He retires at the end of tonight's game. Alec Eppis, number 28. A chance for Gary Crane to score for Carlton. It's a drop punt kick. One point only, and Carlton are three goals, five, Essendon, two, one. Well, that was a lost opportunity. Carlton uh, and now have the ball in the scoring zone, and they've got to make the use of these opportunities. It doesn't rain chances forever. Kicked off by Pryor. Strongly over there towards Crane versus Blue. Crane wins the duel again. Here's his kick coming into the full forward area towards Big John. He's in front of Pryor. Pryor has to somehow get in front of him, succeeds in doing that, and saves the day. Eppis is a veteran of too many games, too many tough encounters, uh, to be so laboured in his return to the, the fray and less hurt. Eppis certainly hurt. He's still wandering around the back line a bit dazed. Gosper holds them out this time, kicks for the line, and it's out of play. It's not out of play. It's stood up in his nose. They're still in play with the ball. Now the boundary umpire is signalling now that it is out of play. Let's have a look at Alec Eppis again. He's been in the constant care of one of the trainers. It was two before this for some time now. Throw in, full forward area for the Carlton side. We're ten minutes into the second quarter. Carlton 3-5, lead Essendon 2-1. Not many highlights in the game, but a defender's game, a tough give-nothing-away final. The ball under the half-forward line now for the Carlton side. They've been missing from attack for a short while. The ball has been taken here by uh, Collins, de defending nicely, kicks the ball across the centre wing. Carlton's defence plays with tremendous confidence. They back their judgment. If they come unstuck, it leaves the gate wide open. Collins is doing particularly well. The Bummers are not being caught out. They've got a man warming up in the shadows of the members' stand in case Eppis is not fit and they've got to replace him. They've certainly got plenty of worries about Alec Eppis at the moment. How do you feel that he is? Lake is warming up just uh, inside the perimeter. I think he's all right. He'll uh, weather the storm for a while. He's jumping around a little bit. He'll see it through. Kenzie was all over, Nichols, but it's up towards that half forward line. Eppis tries for it one handed, that's not good enough. Alex Jesselenko has got the ball played in front of him. He can handle this beautifully, a short pass. Brilliant football by both Jesselenko and Kekovic. Well, generally, that ball stayed on line. It was wavering around a bit. It wasn't the perfect pass, and I think Kekovic did well to snaffle it. I think we've got to be fair. It's terribly windy out there, and it's very difficult to judge the flight of the ball and very difficult to kick it accurately. Carlton need this goal. Kekovic is only 25 yards out. He looks as though he's hooked it across the base of it, and Kekovic has now kicked two goals, three behind out of the total of three goals, six that Carlton have kicked. Well, it's two deliberate shots in the last few minutes. There's Barassi, and you can bet odds that these ulcers are acting up well and truly right at this moment. Uh, Jack Rout, chairman of selectors, is further along from Barassi, and then Kevin McEncrow, and on this end is uh, Peter Smith, son of the former uh, great demon coach Norman Smith. Oh, Mark, he held Williams out there, who's sounding off from the umpire for not awarding him a penalty. And the mark has been taken safely by Bennett. Bennett, a drop punt kick is high. Kekovic will have to leap high for this. It'll be spoilt from behind. The kick was too high. Quirk, nice in his groundwork. Running into an open goal from 50 yards out. Slam, and he just shaved the inside of the post. No mistake about it. That, again, was a lost opportunity. And when you're playing a side, the calibre of Essendon, this doesn't happen all day long. You can bet London to a brick that Essendon will come back. But do you see this now as developing into a break for Carlton? Can you see them getting the upper hand? Yes, but they're not, they're not where it counts on the scoreboard. Like, yes, for sure, as long as they kick goals, it should be half over now. Carlton have had ten scoring shots to Essendon's three. They lead, however, by uh, not too many points. They lead by 12, 25 to 13. The ball is out of play now, run out, so there's no penalty against the player who kicked it as full back. The grand final, the supreme football occasion in Victoria, 
here at the MCG in perfect weather. A penalty in the ruck. McKenzie is penalised. It should be a free kick to Jones. McKenzie was into his back. He's having angry words to say to umpire Crouch, but umpire Crouch knows the rules. And here's the six foot six frame of the Tasmanian Peter Jones booting the ball with a drop kick. Why don't they use more of those? That's the way to kick him right up there into the full forward area. Mark spoke from behind. Picked up here by Munari, running out of time, gives a hand pass to a man covered in Bennett. He was left-footed anyway. The ball is taken here by Barry Davis, breaking away smartly, kicks the ball right across the half-back line. He's lucky in finding a man there in Russell Blue, who for a change was in front of Crane and took the mark. This is his sixth kick. Crane has had 11, and there's a good kick by Russell Blue up towards centre-half forward. Gould in front of Noonan. Noonan knocks the ball away. A chance here for Robert Walsh to get Carlton away. Up trouble. That's a good kick up towards centre-half forward. And lurking there was Bennett, but he was too late on the scene. Williams has got it. Hand pass it across to Fletcher, and that's pretty good cooperative football. Fletcher's got tons of pace. He's had a bounce, and then a hand pass across to Barry Davis, one of the best half-flankers in the business. And that's why a magnificent pass has found teammate Charlie Payne at centre-half on half-forward flank. <laughs> is his coach who is right down there in front of him as he kicks the ball right into the half forward line two count and fellas fly against each other one was lost lost is getting run of the ball here but oh that Essendon fellow who was gosper seemed to go right into the gutter and I thought he might have hit his head on those iron pickets but obviously not he's okay the danger of the situation is that Carlton have wasted many opportunities and Essendon could score a goal now with their first attack for some period of time Gould tried to break clear and couldn't outstretched arm of pain stopped him might be a good piece of luck for Essendon. The ball has run out and kept on their half-forward line. Whether it's Carlton's nerves, but they've got a tremendous amount of players that like to finesse. Throw in a half-forward line for the Carlton team. Fletcher. Fletcher takes the mark and he'll keep the pressure up on these Carlton defenders. The ball is into attack for the Bombers. Correction to what was said before. Here's the kick going to within about 30 yards of goal. A flying mark here is attempted by Robin Close. Couldn't hang on to it. Didn't get a hand to it. Barry Gould scouting nicely. Kicks the ball right back on his tracks and out of play. There's a bit of an anti-climax in VFL football coming up uh, on uh, Monday night in the night final when Hawthorne will play North Melbourne. But this is the, what the game's all about. The daytime series and uh, it's... The big occasion here between the Blues and the Dons and McKenzie. Hand in the back from Jones. It's his free kick. Oh, 15-yard penalty. He made no attempt to show it to the player on the full. He threw it 10 yards over his head. You must give it to your opponent on the full. And that player crouch has penalised him 15 yards, and this is dangerous. That is a real girl guide rule. Well, it's in the law books and must be obeyed. It's a very poor kick. Falling short, but Paul Stroud is there in front of Ian Collins and has marked it only 20 yards out, straight in front, and Essendon need this goal desperately. They trail by two clear goals. Asking for an opponent to be taken out of the road. 17-minute mark, second quarter. There's the kick by Sproul, and it's the goal. Three goals, one, three goals, seven. Carlton lead by one goal. Goal scorers for Essendon, two to Blethen at full forward, and one then to Sproul. For Carlton, two to Kekovich and one to Crane. Well, there it is, Tony, that Essendon had the ball up there for one quarter of the time that Carlton have had it within their scoring zone, and they get a goal. And now they're back in business. I'd just like to see the game lift a little bit. 16 to 10, the free kicks in favour of Carlton, and the marks are 22 to 16. Also Carlton's way is Nichols. Knocks it 20 or 30 yards out to the side of the ground, bounces for Jesselenko. He got away from Memphis, a left footer up towards the forward line. Oh, good play. Pryor got well out in front of Kekovic on this occasion. And these two are having a great duel. And although Kekovic has kicked two goals, Pryor, I think, is on top of him at the moment. Down towards Silvani. Has the ball knocked away by Evans. There's Eppis now. He's caught with it. Free kick against Eppis. Has he recovered from an injury he received earlier in the game? Well, he has for mine. He was running 100 miles an hour. Then the only trouble with that incident was that the bloke chasing him run 105 miles an hour. The difference in the scores, Carlton's way was 12 points until that goal from Sproul, who broke his leg last year. It's only six points the difference now. Carlton still lead. The ball is into attack. Well over Kekovic's head as a chance for uh, Evans coming through strongly. He seemed to run into a couple of players, lost the ball, picked up by Kekovic, kicks it across the face of the goal square. It's Gerlach versus Munari. The ball bounces and favours Essendon's uh, Barry Davis. Has to punch it in a no-man's land. Now he's beaten for it by Quirk. Clever play by Quirk, but he's got another one to get past. Munari there to help him out. He gives the ball to Munari. Clever play. Tenacious play by Quirk. Then a faulty hand pass, which is tip for tack, goes straight to Ellis, who finds a man now. They're checkmating one another all the time, alone on the wing. It's Fletcher. Look at him move. 
two bounces, short pass, too high, the mark will be spoiled by Wells from behind, he got right up over David Shaw, through comes Wesley, lastly clashed with Fletcher, they both got spilled, it looked there for a moment as though Jack Clark was going to hop onto the field and have word with, uh, with uh, Wes Lofts, he didn't like the way that Lofts came downfield and put the elbow up. Well, just well he didn't collect that estimate player on his way through, he would have been on a stretcher now, but he missed. There's 100,000 people paid money, I'm wrapped in Lofties, he woke them up. There's the knockout, it's smothered, picked up by Noonan, Noonan down towards the forward line, picked off and found by Robert Walls, that's a pretty good kick, and Sergio Silvani's there, and takes the mark, and the umpire played it, although he dropped it. 19 minutes into the second quarter, Carlton lead by one goal, 3-7 to 3-1. Carlton now into attack after Silvani's kick. And it's a good one up towards centre half forward. Williams tried a one-hander. He's running into trouble. Croswell is there. So is uh, John Ellis getting the ball. Hand passed across to Gosper. Gosper had a, a balk. And then he kicks it across to the centre of the ground. Nunes is there a chance for Silvani. It bounces back the other way. And there's Barry Davis on his hammer as Nichols. A long hand pass going up the fetch of the ball. Eludes him. Bounces back. And we see Barry Gill with the ball for Carlton. Picks it up. Kicks it back towards centre half forward. The game's starting to lighten up now. And we see two Carlton players interrupt each other in the flight for the ball. Picked up by Gallagher down towards uh, Pryor. Oh, great attempt to mark by Tekovic. And Epis ran into Pryor. Oh, comedy of errors. As we see Tekovic bundled out of the road. Might get a free kick here. He has, and he deserves it. Kovic is trying and trying particularly hard. If there's a flaw in his game, it's that he gets his hands to too many balls that he doesn't hold. He well, falls over too much. He's hard to check this player because he has good hands and can kick straight from well out. Brian Kekovic, who's playing his 34th game today, 6 feet 1 and a half and 13 stone 10, 22 years of age, set a half forward. This is a bad kick. Doesn't that happen all the time when you give him a rap? The ball is missed by Quirk and is picked up by Gerlach. Gerlach, an interstate back pocket player, kicks for the half-back flank. One-handed attempted mark here by Robertson against Fletcher, who's all over the top of him. The umpire still allows a play on, getting to his feet in scrambling fashion. It's Robertson winning the kick into the full forward area. Over Jones's head it goes. Here comes Eppes, obviously recovered. Eppes in his last game after a great career, boots the ball into the crowd with lusty play. We're 20 minutes into the second quarter. It's six points the difference. Carlton lead in the grand final 68. 18 to 10 of the free kicks in favour of the Blues, a throw in in the forward pocket, up the end of which Carlton are kicking as they lead there by one clear goal, a good knock by Peter Jones, there's Gerlach, a very reliable back pocket player for Essendon, gets them out of trouble, but Nick and Nichols has marked the ball on the centre wing position. Give it to him, he'll be penalised 15 yards, that's what the rule says, but he gave it to him in a correct manner. Nichols should send this well up towards the, oh, it's not a very good kick, it's falling short, a chance for Russell Blue, oh, interfered with, must be a free kick to Alex Jesselenko. Jim Taylor on Channel 9. Well, I was just feeling that Carlton now appear to be firing more. As Killer said, they're not getting it on the board, but they're going in with more determination. Yes, he's kicked to the forward pocket, falling short, and Pryor in front of Kekovic once more. These two are having a ding-dong duel. Kekovic has kicked two goals, three, out of Carlton's score of 3-7. The ball falls for Gosper. He's on the half-back flank at the moment. Here's his kick going to the centre wing, just short of there. It will fall into the arms. He made good position to take it, and Russell Blue. Blue moving back on the back line. Should boot them into attack from here and does. It's a good strong kick. Oh, up for a flying mark from behind. It was uh, sure, but he couldn't hang on to it. Robin close again, heading for home. He's a good player, this kid, the way he circumvents trouble. A good long kick, and that's a goal. Robin close, a beauty. The goal was a beauty, and so is the player, Tony. This boy is a boy that has a need. He livens them up. He goes in for the ball. He'll take the knock and come up fighting. And if Essendon are going to have any chance, they should take some of his spirit. He infuses it, or tries to, and not too many of them go along with him. The scores are level. Essendon four goals one, Carlton three goals seven. They all add up to 25 points apiece. The grand final is even Stevens, 23 minutes into the second quarter. There's the bounce with Nichols going for it, knocking it out here towards the wing. Sergio Silvani knocked it around. Russell Blue came out with a thick ear, picked up by Neil Evans. He's kicked it wide to the wing, and Gary Crane's the first at Robin. But look at Robin Close get on his hammer. Gary Crane steadies, gets away from Robin Close, who tried desperately to pick him up. It's up towards the half forward line. Just a link out there, and Ephesus has snatched it out of the air on the half back flank for Essendon. Goal kickers for Essendon at two to to Blyden, one to Close, one to Sproul, two to Kekovic and one to Crane for Carlton. Epis playing his way. Payne lost 
after the ball in the sky. It's taken here by Essendon forward towards Noonan. Noonan swoops on the ball and is running into an open goal from 40 yards out as he kicked it straight. I think he has. The bombers are bombing. Only because we've got a more accurate bomb site. It registers on the scoreboard as five goals, one to three goals, seven, and that's the be-all and end-all. Get it on the scoreboard and you're in business. Three kicks, Essendon have had 10, Carlton 19. The Marks Carlton have had 24, and Essendon have had 22. The goal scorers for Essendon, two to Blethen, one each to Noonan, Close, and Sproul. And Kekovic has kicked two for Carlton and Crane one. Essendon hit the front by one goal. It's the first time they've been in front, and it happens 20... Four minutes into the second quarter. Here come Carlton. The ball into the forward line. That one skirted right past Alec Eppes, who seems to have slowed down. Picked up by Jesselenko. Kekovic is on his own. Should mark and does. Kekovic is just inside the line by 10 yards. A difficult angle to, uh, to negotiate. But at least he is a left footer and has the chance, uh, a better chance than if a right footer to score from this angle. I was wondering whether Jesselenko is a golfer because that was a beautiful chip shot. It's a kick by Kekovic. He's kicked two goals, three. Oh, this could be a beautiful kick. It's a magnificent kick by Kekovic. Answer a goal with a goal. And it's enough to make the opposition side wonder about their own ability. And this is just what Carlton have done. This is what they had to do, Jimmy. They wasted those opportunities before, and it was obvious Essen were going to come back in the game. Gould has gone to a half-black flank, and Hall is sent a half-back for Carl. The game is really hotting up now. We're getting some real grand final action as Nichols spurs the Blues into attack again after their temporary respite. The ball has gone past Croswell, but not for long. He's quickly in the gate. Has a kick for the goal from 45 yards out, and I think he scored. Brilliant play. Number 17, Greg Croswell. Premiership winning goal. Two goals in a half a minute. That's what gives your side lift, life and love for each other. An excitable record crowd at the 1968 Grand Final in Melbourne. A telecast live into Sydney on TCN Channel 9. The picture emanating from Melbourne and GTV Channel 9. A huge crowd packed into the new Mecca at the MCG. That's the new Western Stand. Bounce up. Gallagher, the rover, turned into trouble from McKenzie, holding the ball, McKenzie's kick, correct decision from umpire Jeff Crouch. A good decision, Tony, that's the third time today Gallagher's tried to make it around the neck and hasn't tried to get rid of the ball. We're playing time on, about five minutes left in the second quarter. Oh, Fletcher's on his own out here in the wind, Robertson had to be on the mark, and we see Fletcher pick it up, down towards a full forward position, oh, black and was high up the pack of couldn't mark it. And we see Walls clear out of trouble for Carlton. Out here towards Robertson and Fletcher having a great duel. Fletcher Collins is coming in to help uh, Robertson. Robertson's got away, but he had the kick under pressure and it's across the line. Robertson for Carlton has had 11 kicks and Fletcher's had nine. At the 22-minute mark in this quarter, Essendon got their nose in front for the first time. They've had it quickly taken off them. They're six points down now. At one stage in the second quarter, they were 12 points down, which was the biggest break that Carlton had. It's even Stevens, really. One goal the difference. The ball is thrown in across the centre. A free kick against McKenzie to Nichols. And look at Big Macca sign off. Dynamic Donald, but the umpire, I'll stick with him. He's right. Macca got one for doing that before and he, he half first uh, stage for it. There's a kick up towards the half line. Barry Davis, a reliable half-back flanker for Essendon has marked it. It's very close to a half-time interval. We've played 26 minutes. It could be another three minutes maybe for at the outside to play before half-time. And uh, we see Walls mark it. And the scores show that Carlton lead by one goal, which is six points. Robert Walls. Walls, Crane, Nichols, oh, Nichols behind the players, put David Shaw down, gave him a terrific shove, and the ball, meantime, is 100 yards away up here on the half-forward line. Jesselenko into the play against uh, Pryor. Pryor stomps on the ball, it goes out here towards uh, Bennett. Bennett handballs the ball for the line, right back here on the centre wing. Shaw is back on his feet after being really put down solidly with the ball going the other way by Big John. Kick, a penalty kick by Pryor. Down the centre wing, Robin Post couldn't mark the ball, picked up by Gary Crane. His kick has come back here towards uh, Munari for chipping in. Oh, good piece of work by Sproul. But Munari got the ball away up towards Eppes. Eppes turned away, beautifully blind turned his opponent. Then he's driven it down towards centre-half forward. A chance for David Shaw. Robin Post and Noonan were also there. The ball's knocked out here to the wing. And here we see Post go, but Barry Gill's got it. The hairless wonder as he kicks it out towards the half-forward flank. Russell Blue getting underneath the ball, but Jesselenko came like a bolt out of the blue and stopped the easy mark. 
The coaches are getting terribly agitated. Barassi's gone down for the half-time address. He's absent from the crow's nest and the member stand at the moment. And Jack Clark is on the edge of his seat down there. Brent Croswell. Beautiful pass, but it was intercepted on the way. It must be a play on. Kekovic tried to take the mark, but couldn't. Free kick will be taken by Brian Kekovic, who's within kicking distance. He's 55 yards out. He has already kicked three goals, three, out of the Carlton total of five goals, seven. There's Barassi going down now, down towards the fence, because it's only about two minutes to go to half-time. Kekovic, a tobacco grower from Myrtleford. 160 miles odd from Melbourne. It's a long torpedo punch kick, dropping into the goal square. Is it over the line? It could be! Goal! Well, Kekovic often has been accused of not being everything he should be at a full forward. But put him under pressure in a grand final, and he is, because that's his fourth. Right in the centre circle is Brent Croswell. Again, as in the second semi-final, his left arm is hanging limply at his side, and I think he's got problems again. He's got problems, Tony, but he overcame them in the second semi, and I reckon he'll do it again. He's got a heart as big as himself. Unari, a hand pass there, which came off the chest and went to Crane. Crane kicks it forward to Jesselenko, chipping in Ellis. This is the ball. Jesselenko again, shakes off boredom. Hand pass here to Croswell. Croswell, a hand pass back to Jesselenko. Jesselenko dangerously close to goals. Beautiful piece of play. Probably the best passage of play we've seen yet. The ball is out of play. Carlton are peppering the goals. They should have a bigger lead, but they're playing better than Essendon, who on their rear visits forward have capped them off. Carlton have won back their 12-point lead they had earlier in this quarter. They lost it by a goal to Essendon, who came with an inspired burst about 10 minutes ago, but they've taken the game away from them again. This is Peter Jones trying to rest his way clear of them in the, in the pack, tries to kick the ball forward, it rebounds off shins, and it's across the line. A throw-in to come about 15 yards from the nearest behind post. 43 points to 31, Carlton lead. 21 like to 12 are the free kicks in favour of Carlton. I don't like to revert to incidents, but I think Cross will be a lot better player if we left him alone. Kenty tries to knock it away. Jones, as he was falling, but we see the ball picked up by Sproul. It's a leftward kick, and it'll be across the line. The marks show that Essendon have taken 24 and Carlton 26. What did you mean by that remark, if we left him alone? Well, I, I think people wrap him too much. I think Crosswell's been, going to be an extraordinary... One, a trailing Carlton 6-8 by 13 points as we start the second half of the 68 grand final. One player crowd in charge, a good knock by Nichols. Travels 30 yards down to his forward line, but Barry Davis is there, and Fletcher, his teammate, wing a hand pass to back to Barry Davis. And there's a drop pass going out here towards Blessing. Blessing always a long way up from goal, some 80 to 90 yards. Oh, and Reslock almost put him down the ball, picked up by Ian Robertson. Robertson down toward the half forward line for Carlton, in front of beautiful anticipation by Ellis. Ellis gets down towards the half forward line. He's looking for his teammate in Alan Noonan. And we see a good play by Robin Close. Bring it half forward, make her up towards the forward line. Wes Lock bundles his opponent out the road. The ball's picked up by Barry Gill. He's hit right across the which must be a free kick. And now he goes again. Young Blethen has been ironed out by Wesley Loft, who's uh, in a tussle here with Charlie Payne. He's very slow in getting onto his feet. Train has come from all points of the compass on this ground to attend to the young star who, with his first two kicks in the grand final, scored two goals. In the meantime, play goes on. There's no rest. There's no rest, but it's Barry Gill kicking to the centre of the ground. It came off Nichols' knees, rebounded to Silvani. Silvani, a former captain of the Carlton side. Nichols is captain now. The ball onto the half-forward line. Bennett is scouting the, up, um, the outer perimeter, but can't bring the ball into play. And here's Adrian Gallagher going for it, but the ball was kicked away from him by Gosper. The ball onto the half-forward line with Gosper following up. He's kicked off the ground. Barry Gill in possession. That's surrender the ball pretty quickly, get rid of it like a hot potato when tackled. The ball is out of play on the forward line, with good applause being given to Gosper, who followed that ball for 100 yards and never let up. He followed it like a terrier. Crowing almost on the centre wing. Nichols this time is beaten by McKenzie. Gives it across to David Shaw. David Shaw up towards the forward pocket. Oh, bless him, gave her. West lost one. And that lost the sound. But we see ball picked up and kicked over the boundary line. Fair enough, and the crowd reacts. They... Uh, Sympathy is with the lad, but nevertheless, there's no such thing as a 17-year-old boy when you're playing in a grand final or any match for that. If he's in your way, he's got to go. 6-8 to 5-1 the score. Carlton leading by 13 points. The margin they held over the Bummers. 
at the half-time interval, which was only a matter of minutes ago. We're in the third minute now of the third quarter. Nichols in front, and again out goes that hand pass a la Polly Farmer of old. The ball is taken forward by left footer Adrian Gallagher. A kick right into the crowd on the half-back flank. Carlton looking quite menacing at the moment. They jumped away to a 12-point lead early in the second quarter. Essendon caught them and passed them by a goal. Then Carlton brought them back to the field and went ahead by a 13-point margin at the break. Free kick in the goal to Don McKenzie against Nichols. This will be Essendon's 13th free kick, but Carlton have had 22, and the marks are 26 to 24, also in favour of the Blues, and of course that's Carlton. Don Clean. McKenzie has it. There's his drop kick up towards a full forward position. Flying high was Peter McLean, but the old reliable Sergio Silvani, number one, has marked the ball at full back. Train with 15 kicks and Gallagher with 13 are the chief kick getters in the game and they both play for Carlton. Here's the kick by Silvani to Peter McLean on his 19th man replacing Hall, a former Melbourne player. He kicks the ball strongly to the members flank. It bounces high on this turf. There's Russell Blue nearly getting his head knocked off by Jesselenko who came down solidly. The ball is under the half forward line still taken away by Sproul not for long. A penalty here to Robin Close who is one of Essendon's outstanding players. Close kicks the ball with a drop kick, usually uses the punt kick, and it's Carlton, two in line, taking the mark and forced to play on by the umpire. A hand pass shooting out there to Gallagher. Gallagher is run down too late by Sproul. The kick's on its way to Jesselenko, who's a fleet-footed individual. Here he is with the ball just inside the line. They allow it to be in play. A left foot kick by Jesselenko to set a half forward. Indecision and a lucky break there as uh, Quirk, coming across play, takes the mark. A long way out from goal, the best part of 70 to 80 yards, but he is such a good kick that he'll put it right down into the scoring zone, and it'll be only 10 yards away when it finishes. It's a good kick. Down towards the forward pocket, Kekovic getting to it, but it'll beat him across the line. Another throw in. Carlton can't seem to get the chain of events working to their own advantage, certainly winning the ball, and they're winning, but they can't get two or three good things on end. A lead by 13 points as we start this third quarter. There's a good knock by Peter Jones. Could be a free kick to Weston. Goes up towards Pryor. Pryor clears it wide to the wing. Nichols will get to it, but I think the ball will beat him across the line. Five minutes into this third quarter, and Carlton lead by 13 points. Carlton are engaged in their first grand final since 1962. The Blues lost their two games against Essendon in the first round, but mastered the Dons in the second semi-final a couple of weeks ago. The Ruckman fly and a smothered kick off Crane. It rebounded off Payne's chest. The ball is to Silvani. A nice hand pass there to Croswell. Kicks the ball forward to the half-forward line. Essendon hold two again through Gerlach, who I think is probably their most reliable defender. Not only their most reliable, their most rugged. Here's the kick coming to the members' flank again. They congregate for the mark. Close spoils it for Big John Nichols. The ball's come down towards Crane. Crane just about to have his 16th kick. The ball kicked away from him. It's a free kick being given to Crane, who's to have his 16th kick right here and now. Crane is a very underrated player. He's a consistent player, and he's always a goer. About 115,000 people plus watching the grand final in Melbourne, live into Sydney on TCN Channel 9. The ball 40 yards from the Carlton goal. Adrian Gallagher runs into a lot of trouble. <laughs> gets his way through Charlie Payne's legs. Is penalised for hanging onto the ball too long. And Payne will take the kick. Payne of the Bombers. They were sixth last season. This year, the Dons headed the premiership list at the end of the first round. They've had a tough road to home in the finals. They're in the grand final. And anything could happen from here as the umpire is awarding a 15 yards advantage to the Essendon side. But the boy on the mark ran over the mark, and you can't do this, so it's a 15-yard penalty. 13 points of difference. Carlton lead. We are five minutes into the third quarter. The ball kicked off the ground by Ellis. It was constructed, but finds Shaw. Shaw grabbed by Gill. Spills the ball, gathers it in with nice uh, uh, reflex action. The ball kicked into the full forward pocket where it's out of play, but they've come from defence right up there forward into attack. This is where Essendon are most dangerous. They've got a few players up here that you could say are close enough to winning their positions. Throwing 20 yards away from the Essendon goal. And we see uh, Fordham, Shepard, Nichols out of the road. The ball's knocked away by Peter McLean of Carlton. Carlton playing in the black nets. Essendon in the white nets. A free kick to Robin Close. He was trying to get the ball. He was grabbed whilst he was not in possession of it. This will spell danger for Carlton because this boy is a very talented footballer. He's already kicked the goal and the behind for Essendon out of their total of 5-1. He's only 35 yards out. Towering torpedo punt kick, but it's across the big sticks and it's only one play. Well, at least this boy looks a footballer. He moves tremendously well. And he's, he's an attraction to the game and his kicking is. His technique's very, very good. After seven minutes of play in the third quarter, the first change in the scoreboard since half-time takes place. Carlton, 44 points, lead Essendon, 32. Carlton, 12 points ahead. This is the greatest margin 
it has been between the sides other than the 13 points that they had up just a few moments ago Fletcher after that beautiful kick up by Loft is very speedy along the wing they can't run him down the kick is coming right back towards Loft now who has to get up against Blethen Blethen tries for the mark Loft spills him and the ball goes across the line Carlton are not chasing like they did a fortnight ago if they're to win this game they've got to take after fellas like Fletcher and really nail them down with McKenzie getting behind, but the ball is picked up by Walls, probably one of Carlton's best players, and Silvani, who has been starring since the half-time interval, has just taken his fourth mark since that interval. He kicks it down towards the centre of the ground. Has a chance now for uh, Bennett. He's in front of Davis and uh, Williams. Williams gets in, takes the ball away from him. Plus to Darrell Gerlach, who gives it back to Barry Davis, but he fumbled it. Gerlach is there, easily Essendon's best player, and he's kicked it wide to the wing, and uh, we wait for the good fellas to fly. Flex at the redhead, Bluford couldn't mark it, picked up by Robertson, number 30. Four, tried to find Munari, but it's across the line. Jim Taylor, what of uh, John Nichols' wrecking performance today? Well, he started off quietly, but since uh, the quarter time interval, he's killed him. He tackles him there. The ball's come forward towards Bennett. Bennett being hustled by Williams all the way. A bit of soccer tactics being used there. Now in goes Davis for the ball. It's come out here towards Minari. Minari can't pick it up. Kick back through the pack by Sproul. The ball under the wing taken by the red-headed Fletcher. A fleet-footed player, if ever there was one. Over here towards Crane. Crane having his 17th kick now. If he can gather possession. He's got it but can't break away. He has to give it a hand pass. Over here towards Ellis. Ellis is bundled out of the way. Pushing the back. It's his free kick. Ellis is one of the most constructive players when in possession of the ball. He has possession now. Watch him sort out a player with this pass. Look at this. Right down Blue's throat. Beautiful piece of work, magnificent step kick. You've got to be joking, they gain nothing. Well, that was still good football to look at. This is the crowd here to see. It mightn't have gained nothing as we see a Essendon player, a Carlton player on the ground. Looks like Gary Crane, who was number six, a very talented winger that Alan Killigrew was speaking about five minutes ago. A good player. He's received the free kick and uh, he's okay now. 17 kicks to Crane, including one in the head. 44 points to 32, 12 points the difference. Carlton had a break of this nature on Essendon early in the second quarter, and they have it now early in the third quarter. Attempted mark by Big Jones from behind, wasn't successful. The ball beat close, doesn't often do that. Picked up by uh, by Jezelenko, his kick is well forward. Kekovic across the face of the pack, very nearly took a spectacular mark. He's appealing for it, and the umpire's going to give a free kick evidently against Carlton. Loud applause from the Essendon players on the field as Gerlach has given that decision. The kick by Gerlach back towards the centre of the ground. Jones behind. He shouldn't be there. He's six foot seven, but he's not using to advantage. Usable piece of work there by Alice. Gets it out to Russell Blue. Russell Blue has fumbled it, but he got his kick under pressure. Kicked up the centre half forward. Picked up by Alan Noonan. Ran across and got away from Barry Gill. Then he's dead. He's kicks down towards the forward pocket. And as Wes Locks in front of Blethen on this occasion, and backing up is Robert Walls, a very good player in the back pocket for Carlton. He clears it out once more have more players with this fierce desire to get the ball and this is for mine why they're ahead Essendon haven't got 18 players that want that ball badly enough coming on the half back flank and there's McKenzie going high into Jones's back quite legitimate picked up there by Barry Gill knocked away once more by David Shaw out the Gill Gill's been very quiet David Shaw's got it once more gets his left foot to it down towards the forward line there's danger looming up as Robin Close goes for it he's being tackled by Peter McLean oh he's over this time this allows Wes Loft to come in Loft gets his kick and he kicks it out wide for the wing there's a chance for Gary Crane he's got away from the doctor who's walking off the ground and Crane's got it he's had a bounce he's had two bounces He's had three bounces, beautifully shepherded ball by Alex Jesselenko, picked the ball up, he's gone six. Oh, silly play, Jesselenko. He grabbed hold of his come out the campus when the ball was 50 yards away and the umpire has picked it up. Well, he must have had a short circuit in his brain box because Jesselenko was doing well and Crane was doing particularly well. It was bad luck that he gave that foul away. The kick by Epis is onto the half-forward line. Here's Gould. Hasn't shone out too much in this game. A dashing left foot kick onto the half-forward line. They fly for the mark and it's safely on the chest of number 17, Gerlach, who gives it here to Barry Davis. They play like hand and glove. The ball onto the half-forward line coming down to meet at Noonan. Noonan takes the mark. Should play on. Decides to now. Hesitates. He who hesitates is lost, but not on this occasion. The kick is high to within 30 yards of goal. Out in front making the mark. He's young. Blethen again. And his first two kicks in the grand final, which represents only his second game in league football, picked in a key position. He kicked two goals. Here he is with his chance to kick three from straight out in front and 35 yards away. Yes, only 35 yards out straight in front. Three goals for the youngster. Three good goals for the youngster. Because he's on a hard player in West Boston, and because he's got a team that isn't really killing them, so three goals at this stage of the game is a great effort by a boy playing his second full league game. 
32 points has increased now to 38, which makes them six down again. Only one goal the difference. It's been a close match throughout. The greatest break has been the 13-point margin, which separated the sides at the half-time break. We're now 12 minutes beyond that. We're 12 minutes into the third quarter. Carlton looking pretty good here with the... Uh, showing some authority they're certainly not getting the break that they hope for against the Bombers it's an even Stevens affair here come the Bombers again that kick was smothered otherwise it would have gone into attack for them the ball is going Carlton's way now racing in and taking the ball is Fordham he's in possession a free kick is going Carlton's way that's a throw against McKenzie and he's really shouting the instruction to McKenzie as to what it was all about Sergio Silvani the iron man of football has it on the center of the ground a good kick up towards the forward pocket oh Alec Eppes has the ball in his control Beautifully walked around Gallagher, playing his last game with league football, and then Buddy's top picked up towards the half forward line. It's all Carlton. There's three of them here, picked up by Jones, gives it across to Gould, Gould up towards the full forward position, and there's the best player on the ground without any shadow of doubt, Gerlach. Well, uh, you're the worst judge in the world, but I agree with him. There's the kick by Gerlach, wide to the centre of the ground, and we see uh, Jones try to pick it up one handed. Barry Davis gives the ball across towards Fletcher. He's another good player. Fletcher gets his kick up towards the half forward line. Charlie Payne is beaten by Robert Ball. Wes Lofts is there to help him, and so is Barry Gill, number 21. But you can see for yourself it's across the line, and the boundary umpire will throw it in. Carlton, who looked good in winning the second semi final against the same side, Essendon, by a margin of 36 points, are showing some authority here as they have the ball under control most of the times but there's still an open go and look is that Barry Gill getting whacked there and he seems to be in some bother he dropped the whack in the head and he heard his leg as he's fallen apparently six goals 8.44 to Essendon 6.238 Carlton lead by six points free kick will be taken by Barry Gill because he has grabbed whilst trying to make the ball his objective the free kicks so far are to Essendon 18 and 26 to Carlton the marks are 31 each Essendon's last Premiership, 1965. Carlton's last, 21 years ago. 1947, a long drought. Gill is not well. The ball is kicked onto the centre wing and relayed there with a highlight-type performance onto the half-forward line. Adrian Gallagher is grabbed high or either holding the ball. It's holding the ball. Barry Davis knows that he grabbed him fairly. He was much closer to the scene than we were and kicks the ball forward. Played on without any hesitation. The ball is on the half-forward line for the Bombers. They're attacking more consistently than Carlton. It's their back line's turn to be uh, pressured about a bit. It was the other way in the second quarter. I think Carlton in trouble with Gallagher, who is limping badly. He's been caught with the ball too much today, which shows that he's got a little bit of uh, injury. Kicked off the ground there for Essendon. He comes up towards the forward line with Ian Collins. Is oh, and Wes lost caught one behind the play from Charlie Payne. Chipping in his Teddy Ford, and the umpire says, play on. Back from Ellis, back towards uh, Robertson. Robertson picks it up back to the centre of the ground. Bouncing towards Russell Blue, who punches it 20 yards up towards the forward position. Gould has got it. Oh, certainly he's way out of trouble. Beautiful play by Gould. Down towards the forward line, and Gallagher who was limping has marked the ball on his own they've got real problems with Gallagher he's probably the best rover on the ground and is less than 50% fit at this moment kicks the ball into the full forward area through hands again behind John Nichols can't pick it up he grabs somebody when not in possession the umpire let it go it should have been a holding the man decision the ball is cleared by Essendon Alec Eppes doing outstanding things on the halfback line now the ball out of play Yes, Eppes is, Tony, but the man on him when he's getting the few opportunities is playing well, and that's Alex Jeselenko. But both back lines now are well on top of their respective forwards because they're backing their judgment and going to meet the ball. McKenzie got the knockout, and then he got it out towards Teddy Ford, and he was driven it up towards the full forward position. Loft sets himself, missed the sitter, a chance for Ian Flatton, a left foot snap by this youngster, goes right across the face of goals, and no score. No worry about why Loft didn't take that mark. He ducked his head. He's had two whacks in the head, too, from young Blethen, and uh, maybe he's expecting the third. There's another throw in, taken out of the air by Peter Jones. He handballed it to nobody in particular, and there's this uh, youngster again, Blethen. Good player. Oh, he dropped it. He was looking for somewhere to go. He's pushed in the back. The umpire says, play on. Gosper and also Peter McLean is picked up finally by Robin Close. He's grabbed the umpire, says, play on. Picked up by Sproul. Oh, it's close, but it's only one point. They're attacking continually. They've had, by far, the greatest use of the ball in the play we've had so far in the third quarter, and that amounts to 17 minutes. But they're not ahead on the scoreboard. It's still an even Stevens affair. Well, it is, Tony, and it's because they've been uh, put under pressure the same as Carlton were in the second quarter. They're forwards I'm talking about. There's a magnificent mark by Fletcher, the mark of the day. He took the mark of the day last week, and that was equally as uh, brilliant. 
five points the difference in the scores. Carlton still leading, 6-8 to 6-3, as Fletcher, from just across the centre wing, kicks the ball into the full forward pocket at the Richmond end of the ground. It bounced right off Blethen's chest. The ball's picked up by Charlie Payne. A kick at the sticks, and it's one flag. 44 to 39 the score. Silvani down on the ground, and... Uh, showing a few aches and pains, and now young Blethen is brought up onto his feet, and he seems to be winded. Just winded, Tony. There's a bit of a boo from the crowd, but I think anything he's copped is out. Even Stephen, if you cop one, and you can give it back fair enough. He's only 17 years of age, but he's learning quickly. Well, I don't he? care, mate. Like, he's, he's uh, given a couple, he, 17 or 70. If you want to give him, expect to get him back. Free kick against McKenzie will be taken by Peter Jones. Six foot six and a half, this fellow from Tasmania. Well, it's most unlikely they're going to create any records with their scores in this game, which is still relatively low for this stage in the game. I think they might create a record with the attendance figure, which should beat the 115,000 of 1956. The record score is 22-18, a total of 150 points to Essendon. That was in 1946, a long time ago. Almost at the time when Carlton won his last premiership, 1947. The ball is taken by Gosper on the half-back flank. Kicks to the half-forward line. Anybody to mark here? It's Robertson in front, couldn't hang on to the mark, and he's grabbed by Davis. Wasn't in possession, the ball across the line. The umpire could have sorted out two decisions there, but he elects to, to be the throw -in. Jones, number 28, in front of McKenzie, 24. McKenzie with his high spring, counters that six-inch um, height at uh, disadvantage. The ball back here towards Davis. He's one of Essendon's best. A good play by Williams. Knocked it back. But, oh, Jesselenko was, was fastest in, in reading the play. Gets back there. Kicks the ball to this area. Missed by Blue, whose arm is bandaged. Taken by Brian Kirk, one of the Titans' uh, best players. Follows up play here. Has a kick at the sticks now. Falls over. Boots the ball forward. Touch and go. Oh, it's a goal. How was that? Tony was a magnificent individual effort and above all it was what Carlton wanted. For a long time I've had the feeling that Carlton couldn't find a winner up here on their forward line and that just that little deed or that little act that Quirk just did should give tremendous impetus to the Carlton side. Could we feed the crowd mics into our earphones please? The ball under the half forward line coming out here, close, left foot kick by him into the full forward area, Collins dropping back takes that mark comfortably just as well because it was an open gate behind. We're 20 minutes into the third quarter. Kick by Collins coming back here along the members' perimeter. Up they fly for it, and it's Jones. He takes the mark in front of Robin Close. Carlton lead by 10 points at the 20-minute mark. Not a very good kick. Down towards half four line, high above the pack was Bennett. He couldn't hold it, picked up by Munari. It's down towards the four line, it's all Essendon. A chance for two of them, and Pryor couldn't quite hold the ball. A chance for Bennett. The ball's knocked away from him. Bennett's still in the fight, but he's got it. He's got a chance to left foot short pass going across towards the half forward line where Croswell, who plays in the centre, has come right down to the forward pocket, and he's only 35 yards out. I'm glad that you didn't mention his injured shoulder. Anybody that's hurt doesn't play football well. This kid's all right. There's a drop kick going. Not quite straight enough for Carlton to make them seven goals, nine. Essendon are six goals, four, so Carlton lead by 11 points. Carlton have switched Jesselenko to centre-half forward and Bennett onto the forward flank. The goal kickers for Carlton are Porter Kekovic, one each to Crane, Croswell and Quirk. This is Jeff Pryor kicking the ball to the members' flank again. It's on the half-back half, half -back line. David Shaw fumbled and couldn't keep control of the ball. The goal kickers for Essendon are three to Blethen, one to Noonan, Close and Sproul. Gosper is the chief kick winner for Essendon with 13 kicks. And with 19 kicks, Crane is the Carlton chief goal uh, kick winner. The ball is very close to him now. Nearly gathered it in again. The ball's gone back here to Croswell. Croswell sh shining. The ball is kicked under the half forward line. It's falling to Essendon. It's taken by Williams. Number 22, Williams, is tagged here by Jezelenko. And was almost last man standing in that occasion, in that pattern of play, in the Essendon defence. Ball back to the centre. Beats Gould. Good play by Noonan. Lovely hand pass. Down Fordham, who gives it back to Noonan. Clever play by both players. Left foot stab pass going up there into the full forward area to Blethen. Dropped it. Lofts comes in behind. Grab or not in possession. The ball's come back here to Noonan. Noonan kicks it right over Lofts' head, going almost into the goal square. Good mark. Sergio Silvani. Well, the Carlton defence has uh, lost a little bit of its confidence. They're making errors. Crowell has marked it. Kicked off Silvani. Silvani's taken six marks for Carlton and uh, practically all in this third quarter. Sproul will kick it right up towards the full forward position. It's a lovely drop kick. 
with a chance for pain from behind the pack, but he couldn't hold the ball. Taking the ball away now is Adrian Gallagher. Kicks it down towards the centre of the ground. Gary Crane has got the chance and a good mark for this fellow who has come back after being knocked about. And he's had about 17 or 18 kicks. Plays on quickly up towards that half-forward line. Setting himself with Barry Davis, Dennis Minari, and also we see Brian Quirk get the ball. Races down towards the goal, but Jeff Pryor stands there firm as a rock. 22 minutes into the third quarter. Carlton lead 7-9 to 6-4. The ball on the half-back line for the Essendon team. Gee, they're defending stoutly. That's Gerlach again winning himself a kick. He's probably best player on the ground. Kicks just across the centre wing and the mark has fallen to Payne. The player who is running in to grab him here in uh, Peter McLean thinks that he was off, but the umpire allows the latitude Essendon's way. The ball is kicked to the forward line and it's knocked out of play from there. 51 points to 40. 11 points the difference. Carlton lead. We're 23 minutes into the final end of the third term. Essendon will switch blue to the forward flank and short to the wing. Just the knockout by Peter Jones, taken away by Robert Walls, defending well for Carlton, but it's across the line. A good player for Essendon is Gerlach in the back pocket and also Fletcher, Barry Davis playing well, and for Carlton, Robert Walls, and also Croswell and Crane. Nichols going onto the ball. No, evidently not. Gosper chips in in front of Gallagher to take the ball. Gallagher, Gallagher doesn't seem to be limping anymore. So Silvani wins a kick again onto the half-forward line. Carlton come into attack again. This is Evans racing for the ball. Kicks it close to the line, and I think it'll just about go out of play. 11 points of difference. Carlton still in front. Except for one brief moment, they've been in front throughout the game. Yes, Tony, I think that they are having more use of the ball. They've generally got to settle down. They'll win by a lot. Nichols tried to knock it down towards Gallagher. Gallagher's grabbed, he's got the ball. I think the umpire will rule the ball up because it was held to his body. The free kicks are 27 to 19 in favour of Carlton and the marks are 38 to 36, also Carlton's way. Besides the Premiership pennant, Carlton and Essendon here today are competing for the lion's share of the $10,000 remaining to be won in WD and HO Will's bonus awards. 7,000 to the winner, 3,000 to the runner-up. Silvani kicks him forward again. He's doing best to get his hands on the 7,000. The ball is back to the centre wing. Silvani follows down play. Got it again. Just gets past Barry Davis, but didn't get back. My anticipation was not that good. The ball is into the full forward area. Taken here by Adrian Gallagher. Left foot kick right across the half-forward line. Who'll take it from here? Carlton still playing in front. Kekovic is bumped fairly out of the duel. The ball has come over here towards the domino theory. Picked up by Crane. Missed, gone behind to Pryor. Pryor kicks to Gould. Taken by uh, Blue. Blue gets it straight to Shaw. Shaw follows downfield and from one pendulum swing it goes to the other. Lovely pass straight there to Fordham. Decide to play on top of the ball. Holding the ball. It's against Fordham of Essendon. It was a very dangerous move. Essendon players were running everywhere and chock full of confidence. There's the kick by Gould. Pretty high. Now towards the centre of the ground. No decisive mark about it at all. Oh, throwing the ball away from Williams. Oh, yes, there's the umpire. The three quarters. Yes, he saw it. Well, all that he didn't bounce it, he threw it out in front of him. Well, now, had he been grabbed and he'd have made, gone through that same motion, he would have given a free kick to the player who just, in my view, threw the ball away. Where's the consistency? Controversy between the commentators, umpires and panellists <coughs> is part and parcel of the game. Here's Jesselenko with the ball on the half-forward flank. We're into the time on period now in the third quarter, with Carlton leading by 11 points. which gave it straight to Gallagher. A left foot kick by him is swinging into the sticks, but not swinging in anywhere near enough. It was on a left to right arc, but uh, not severely enough to bring it into the scoring area, which really is a 21-yard target. 51 points to 40, 11 points of difference. Carlton in possession of the ball again. Jones gave it across there to Gallagher. Couldn't break clear. Kekovic was trying hard to gain possession. Still is, as the ball again goes out of play. About five yards from the nearest behind post. Carlton in a good scoring position here. If they can win the initiative in the ruck, and they've been holding that for most of the day. Up goes uh, Jones against McKenzie, who oh, roughed him up for sure, and it's McKenzie's free kick. That uh, was uh, as clear as daylight. 51 to 40 the score. Carlton in front, 7-9 to 6-4. We've had one minute now of time on in the third quarter. Lemon time is about four minutes away. McKenzie with the ball. Oh, not a very good kick. Was cupping quite a bit of distance. Bounced away from three players. Finally picked up there by, uh, by Quirk. Quirk gets to it once more. Robertson it is. Robertson's got it on his hammer left. Puts it across to Quirk. But it's across the line. Throw it in, says the boundary umpire. Number eight is Munari. Number two, Big John Nichols against Neil Evans. Number 36, Carlton in the black Knicks. Nichols' kick is smothered. Finally, we see Barry Davis come out with the ball. Kicks up towards the centre of the ground where we see an Essendon player chip in. That's Robin close once more. Steadies. 
Out towards that half forward line, looking for a teammate in Noonan. Noonan couldn't pick it up on his first attempt. Got it to the second. Hand passes across here towards Fordham. Fordham one need to bounce it in this case. He's caught with it again. Play on, says the umpire. And we see Lock get the ball for Carlton. Fordham is still on the ground. It's up to the centre of the ground. Nichols tries to one-hander. Fordham is still out. Kicked off the ground by Nichols over towards the half forward line. That's a go between Nippus and uh, Bennett. And Nippus gets his kick and a push to go on with. It's over the line now to bounce. Players are down over the other side of the ground. One is Gary Crane and the other is Fordham. Fordham's in more bother than it appeared when first he fell on the ground. The second time he was caught with the ball, very nearly gave oh, away two it kicks. Is. Oh, there's a bit of a box on behind. Mackenzie and Big John Nichols, the, the two captains. That's the first incident of that kind, blatant incident we've seen in the game. Kenzie carried on like the last of the wild colonial boys. He deserved to, too. And there's the uh, Nichols getting the ball, a hand pass coming out here to Ian Collins. This will liven the game up. It's up towards the half forward line, a chance of Bennett. Oh, Eppes goes right across him, a chance for Collins. He won't shift yet. Eppes is still there, a free kick to Eppes, the way he was tackled by his opponent. The Essendon coaching bench continues to be most animated. If you stick on Jack Clark, you'll see him jump off that bench more often than not. The ball is to Alec Eppes. Eppes from the back line. Kicks the ball onto the half-forward line. Coming down to meet it. Robin Close couldn't take the mark. It uh, very nearly went to Peter McLean. Now it has. Gone behind him with a quick hand pass to Barry Gill. Gill trying to fend off here against Sproul. Succeeds in beating him. Finally turns for the line. And the ball is coming out of play. Essendon have been given an example of determination by Epus. It's his last game, it's a grand final, so what does it matter? Epus has thrown all caution of the winds and he's doing everything right and trying to lift his side with inspiration. He's a knock away, but Sergio Silvani using great skill. Gets it down towards that half forward line. Barry Davis is running foot. Oh, he's got the centre. Clap is there, caught with the ball. He got his foot to it as it was coming from his grasp. And we see Williams and also Jesselenko. Davis caught pretty high. Free kick to Barry Davis. Adrian Gallagher puts it down with a firm shoulder. Plenty of spice in this game now. It's really livened up because of that uh, last of the straight backs exchange between the captains, Nichols and McKenzie. 51 points to 40. Carlton still lead by 11 points as the mark is taken by McKenzie against Nichols. The captains clashed then, but in going for the ball, it was Macca taking the honours. There's the kick by McKenzie, a good one, plenty of distance, up towards the four line, flattened through, but he was up too high, and it will be a free kick against him, could be taken by Peter McLean, or Wes Lox. Looks like Wes Lox. Lethen's going for the spe spectacular, rather than the safe and the sure. Here's Lox kicking the ball along the member's wing, from the depth of defence, he kicks the ball to the half-back line, Shaw flies against Big John, John wins it on the ground, he's tackled by Sproul, pulled off his feet, the kick has been misdirected, but it still travels 40 yards, goes to Alec Eppes now, off the front of the pack, he wrong foot Munari beautifully, left foot kick by Alec Eppes, who leaves for overseas in a few weeks, the ball onto the half-forward line, down here towards uh, uh, West Loft, ably um, shepherded for by Collins, the ball is kicked out of play. 51 points to 40. The scores have been static for quite some time. 11 points to Carlton in the lead in quest of their first premiership in 21 years. Throw in on the half-forward line there for Essendon. And we see Nicholas try to knock it out, but lurking around the Packers for them. Has the ball knocked away, but he will receive a free kick. Oh, very lucky to receive this, I think. But Fordham's got it on the half-forward flank. Harassi's going mad on the Carlton coaching benches. Fordham wins that decision right in front of him. Kicks the ball towards centre forward. If a mark is taken here by Blethen, it was spectacular. It won't be allowed because the siren had already sounded with that ball in mid-flight. It's easy enough to get him, Tony, when no one else is trying to stop it. Carlton go into the final term. 11 points up. Carlton in the box seat with a lead, but it could be erased very quickly if Essendon fall into the stride that they've maintained for the majority of the season. Up goes Big John to set them a good example for a start. Knocks the ball strongly onto the half-forward line towards Crane. He's had more kicks than anybody else on the ground. He wins another against Alec Eppes this time, and Carlton land the ball well forward. They've gained 50 yards and have the ball between the half-forward line and the full forward pocket. Crane has had 21 kicks. To throw in only uh, 60 or 70 yards away from the Carlton goal. Nobody decisively wins a knockdown. There's a chance for Gallagher. Well, he stumbled over, but he gets his left foot to it. It's high in the air, not covering much distance. Pryor should mark it very easily on his chest, and he does. 
I, I think it's pretty noticeable that Kekovic is going to move around a good bit. I thought there was a change, but there hasn't. There's a kick down towards the forward line, knocked away by Kekovic, sharp there by his opposition, and that is Gotha down towards the half forward line. A mark to Gould, no, says the umpire. Yes, he's going to play it to Gould. The man in front. The uh, Essendon player didn't like the decision. That was Teddy Fordham. And we see Gould, centre half back. Big mop of hair. There's his kick up towards half forward flank. Coming back on the scene is Jessalenko. certainly, but Alex Jesselenko timed it to perfection. Well, that was a tremendous mark. It's a pity that there hasn't been more of them here at the Melbourne ground. Jesselenko has no chance of kicking a goal. It's a short pass coming out here towards Kekovic. It'll bounce for him, but he's grabbed. Got away from his opponent and Alec Eppis playing his last game for his career. Kicks it down wide to that half-forward flank. Bounces in play, but as Gould once more got the ball, characteristically grabs it with one hand, and then he hooks it up towards the half-forward line. Charlie Payne. Oh, how was that? It's useless players like Kekovic appealing for free kicks at this stage of the game. You've got to get on with the cape and win it. The Bombers in defence. Kicked up the ground by Coswell, taken by Essendon. Again, they come forward. Now they are into attack. The ball is just across the centre, between the centre line and the half-forward flank. There's Robin Close getting whacked after he got rid of the ball. It was a good kick by him, despite that pressure. Wesley lost careering downfield. He goes where Angels fear to tread. Boots the ball forward. He's fallen over in the meantime. The ball has gone to the half-forward line. It's in Carlton's position. Left foot kick by Crane to the half-forward line, taken by McKenzie. McKenzie was... Uh, Quite outraged by a box up he had with, with uh, Nichols earlier in the play. The ball towards Collins. Collins sticks his head into trouble. A hand pass out here towards Gould, who gave him the call. Good cooperative play by the Blues defence. The ball is kicked to the centre towards Fletcher. Fletcher heard the footsteps coming. The ball has come here towards the members' wing. Taken by Croswell. Croswell grabbed from that possession. It should be his free kick. Well, they've got a few players that are starting to try to do the unnecessary thing. Oh, come on, stop. There's the kick by Crosswell up towards full forward. Kekovic in front has the ball knocked away. Munari tried to take it off the pack. Finally, it's picked up by the Mr. Miracle Man himself. Jesselenko! And like the champion, he's rubbed it along the ground for one point only. Well, this fellow is a most talented player, but that was an unforgivable, forgivable mistake, and well he may hold his hands in his head. He should never have missed that, and how he does it, he does it frequently. It's beyond my powers of description. Charlie Payne playing full back and not Jeff Pryor. The ball is kicked here towards Williams. Got through his hand somehow. Silvani burst his way through and knocks the ball across here to Quirk. His pass is beautifully directed towards Kekovic, who gets himself ironed out. Might be getting a free kick for a push in the back. It's a free kick to Kekovic, who's kicked four so far. I think it was the free kick the way he was tackled. Anyway, what can we say? What can you do? It's a free kick. He's already kicked four goals, three, and he's the best part of 40 to 45 yards out. You can see the angle that he is on. Well, that was a funny old kick. He tried to screw it across, but he's kicked it further away from goal, and it's an easy mark to Williams. There's a kick by Williams, bound towards the centre of the ground. A chance for Ian Robertson, a good mark. Oh, he went to play on. Went to play on. Pickovich has kicked four goals, three. Letham has kicked three goals. Two opposing full forwards, a magnificent drop kick by Robertson, and this time it's hit. And the six foot six giant has held it, and he's only 25 yards out, straight in front. The play that Carlton is supposed to adopt here is that Bekovic moves around and Jones comes in behind him and catches that big high one. They don't do it with any guile, but it worked that time. If Jones only kicks a point, he puts Carlton in the best position they've been in so far, 13 points ahead. If he kicks a goal, they're 18 points up. They're 12 points up at the moment. Jones lines them up from straight in front. One flag. They now lead by 13 points, and that equals the best lead they've had at any time during this game. Two sitters missed by Jones in front and by Jesselenko. Barassi is really upset on the bench as the ball comes out here towards Robertson, but Silvani's in front. And against McKenzie, they don't even get off the ground and he takes the mark. He catches the cherry. Carlton have got a lot of players doing better at the moment. They're probably playing better. 
Here's the kick up towards the forward line, and we see Gerlach make a mistake, which is unusual. His kick is a short one along the ground, falls into the hands of Quirk. Quirk will have to hurry. He gets his kick under great pressure, didn't travel far. Williams has it. Now it comes out towards Gosper. Gosper up towards the centre of the ground, where we see uh, Gould from the back with the uh, power. I thought he might have been penalised. A hand pass down to Nichols. Nichols, a hand pass out here towards Adrian Gallagher. A right foot pass going out towards uh, Pekovic, and he's got it. Empire's whistle went to his mouth and it was a mark to Kekovic. And Kekovic's statistics are that this is going to be his 12th kick. He's taken four marks and he's kicked four goals, three, and he's only 15 yards away from the goals. There seems to be more confidence around the Carlton team at the moment. They're not kicking goals, but if Essendon persists in letting them have the opportunities to kick them, it's self-evident that they will score, score goals and soon. Well, they've missed two setters. Let's see what they can do with this one. Jones has missed one. Jesselenko has missed one, Les Kekovic, with all the deliberation in the world, and he's missed as well. This is bad football for Carlton, it's 7-12. Coach Barassi, and chairman of selectors route, Barassi on the phone. That's a mark to Williams. Carlton engaged in their first grand final since 1962. The Blues lost their two games against Essendon in the first round, but mastered the Dons in the second semi-final, and they're getting the upper hand here. They lead by 14 points at the moment, 54 to 40. 7-12 to 6-4. The ball on the centre wing to Gosper. Essendon come forward through Fletcher and Gosper. Gosper kicks the ball towards centre half forward. They need a mark here. Lost was spectacular in flying for the ball, but couldn't take the mark. Comes out to Collins. Collins loses it. Kick off the ground, going to the full forward area. It's a free kick to Collins. Held, we're not in possession, or else pushed in the back. You make up your mind, because I'm not sure. Eight well, minutes I'm, into the final term. I'm certain he was grabbed, trying to make the ball his objective. And there's the kick wide to the flank. A chance for Robertson, Silvani in front. Very fast becoming the best player on the ground, particularly for Carlton anyway. He's dominated it since half-time. He's taken nine marks, and it's his 16th kick. It's up towards the centre-half forward position. Great attempt to mark by Quirk, but now it's across the line. 40 points to 54. Carlton lead by 14 points, eight minutes into the last quarter. Bennett being taken off the field by Sid Jackson, a player for whom Carlton hoped to have a clearance. He's from Western Australia, so that he can play next season. Oh, firm bump there, traded out. Nichols to Pryor, and I think it's an unfair penalty against the ball. So do I, it's not basketball, it's Australian rules football. A good, solid, fair bump. I disagree with the decision. In the meantime, he's gone up towards the forward line, and now we see the ball come out on the ground. Goes out here towards Collins, chipping in his gospel. A short pass going right across the face of goal, and he's found Bruce Lake, who came on uh, just a short while ago. Now, Bruce Lake is only 25 yards out, straight in front. Esperin, Essendon need this goal desperately. A drop punt kick. He's hooked it. But it's a goal. Vanderbilt goal. Eight points the difference in favour of Carlton. about long enough it always seems to be the the, the set rule if you miss your opportunities in front of goal such as Carlton have been doing for the last 10 minutes the other side get it up in, once and they score a goal this has put Essendon right back in business the bounce up McKenzie goes against Jones but the superior reach of Jones wins the decision the ball into the half forward line towards Shaw and also uh, Croswell Shaw fighting hard for the ball bundled out of the way finally picked up by Jeselenko weaves his way back through the pack he moves that uh, quickly that the cameras find it hard to follow in the ball across here towards Kekovic and also Payne but the boundary man will take up the next act it's 7-12 to 7-4 eight points of difference and Carlton still lead the greatest break they've had is 14 points Mackenzie trying to get in front of Nichols nothing much happened in the ruck here's Epis charging down on the ball bursts through Jeselenko getting around in front of Epis and then falling all over his is Gallagher, there's to be a bounce up on the half-forward line. Player off for Essendon, I think, is Russell Blue. Kenzie tries to knock the ball away from Jones, picked up by Neil Evans. Neil Evans gets a left foot kick, it's going wide to that half-forward flank. Bruce Lake, who just kicked that last goal, is very close to the boundary line. The boundary umpire says he wants it, and Carlton lead by eight points at the ten-minute mark in the last quarter. 7-12 to 7-4, a low-scoring game. A battle of defences and many errors made in the game. Ten minutes into the final term, here the Ruckman fly for it again. Oh, Mackenzie, clearly that time, but where's the rover? Up there in time to pick it up. Fordham sees the ball across the line in front of Crane, who is the chief kick winner in the game. Crane's kicks, 
total now 22. Evans and McKenzie versus Jones. What for, former Ruckman Jim Taylor? Definitely, Tony, on the shoulder. McKenzie got up to such a height because he put his hand on Jones' shoulder and uh, lifted himself right up to the atmosphere. Was the kick by Jones up towards that half-forward flank, setting himself and marking it as Neil Chandler, who just came on to replace uh, Bennett. Now he's on that half-forward flank, will kick it up towards full forward. It's across towards the forward pocket. Charlie Payne from the back couldn't hold it. There's a chance now for Carlton play a Coswell. He's only got one arm now. And he'll be penalised for holding the ball. Carlton have always got a man running past them, backing up an Essendon and a lacking this, and this is why Carlton keeps surging the ball up forward. Chandler. Beautiful mark by Chandler just came on. I just wonder if Carlton have heard because Croswell should not be on the field. He's got one arm up towards the forward line. The ball's knocked away. A chance for Charlie Payne. His cobbler comes out here towards Nichols. It's Nichols and Epis. Physical battle. Free kick. Grabbed by the arm by Big John. Is there a rule in the book that says on the arm? Definitely not. Because you impeded him in his progress when he didn't have the ball. Alec Eppis with the ball. Strong kick. The Kalgoorlie boy kicks it almost to the centre of the ground, taken by Jones. At the front of the pack has to play on. The ball was touched on its way to him. Not a clear mark. No mark here. Down in front, Croswell. Croswell skirts the pack. Kick into the goal square. It'll score! Stayed out. It's still out. It's still in play. Gerlach. Tremendous in making up ground to cover that ball. Two bounces. Spectacular play by Gerlach. Three bounces. Being shepherded four. Get rid of it. Almost collapses with exhaustion. The ball's come back to the half-back line. Taken here by Robertson. Kicks the ball into the crowd. Spectacular play when Coswell's ball nearly bounced through. And more spectacular was the recovery by Darrell Gerlach. Maybe it was, Tony, but I was just thinking the fortunes of fate. How about that one? There's Essendon in second reserve getting ready to come on. And that's Donny Gross, their rover. But the fortunes of fate. If ever a goal was deserved, it was then in the fickle fate. Just bounced it away from him. Fordham off the field. Gross goes onto the field. Essendon both reserves on. Lake and Gross. Gross uh, prominent in the play there as McKenzie sorts out a hand pass. The umpire says we'll start it again, boys. And he starts it on the half-forward line with McKenzie giving a beautiful tap down and getting run of the ball to, to Pryor. Pryor seems to uh, have cramp at the moment. The ball on the centre wing. Oh, Fletcher grabs McLean for Sloan getting rid of the ball. Free kick against McLean. He knows it and hands the ball straight back to the red-headed Fletcher. 14 minutes gone. Final term. And Carlton still lead by uh, eight points. Down to, oh, must be a free kick against Fletcher. The umpire didn't see it. So it goes down towards the forward line. Silvani's got it. We'll kick it across the, the uh, boundary line on the half-back flank. The scoreboard. Essendon at seven goals. Four, which is 46. Carlton at seven, 12, which is 54. Eight points is the advantage to Carlton. And here we go into this uh, last half of this quarter. Picked up by Jones. Down towards Silvani. A stalwart for Carlton. He kicks it high in there. This mark won't be allowed. It was picked, knocked away by McKenzie. Out towards Barry Gill. Picked up by Bruce Lake. He's grabbed by uh, Wes Lott. Out the back of his legs he goes. And umpire Crouch will pull it up. He come out of that pack with the odd stop mark on him. No worries. I tried to trample him into the ground like a mushroom. <laughs> Bounce up just near the Essendon goals. The goal here would put them only two points behind. They're eight behind them at the Bowman. Oh, Collins gets upended. The ball going through for a point. Get back in play. Over to Gross. Gross on his 20th man. Playing the ball. Might be his free kick. It was a point, Barney. Cross the line. It's a point. Seven points the difference. 54 points to 47. Seven points the difference. The full back for the Blues. Will try and settle his defence down, make sure they pick up their roving forwards. Lofts to kick off. We have 15 minutes of play left in this last quarter. We've played approximately 15, and each quarter is usually 30 minutes. 25 minutes of play plus 5 minutes of time on. He's going to kick it right around the outer side of the ground. A huge crowd watching this game. It's a good kick by Lofts. Looking for Silvani, one of their really good players. He didn't mark the ball off, and the Carlton player, Gary Crane, has caught with it, but Crouch to run the 50 yards and ball it up. Seven points separating the sides in 15 minutes of play left. The fate of the 1968 pennant is in the balance between the Blues and the Dons. Gets past Gould, number 11. It's Robin Close, shepherded for by Shaw. The kick is still into attack, very much into attack. All good play by Lofts. Juggled the ball at first came to him like a flash and at uh, an awkward angle he gained possession and cleared the ball out tell you what it's not much in this game but there's not enough desire still being shown by one or two Essendon players 
John Crilly and Bill Ashworth on camera for Channel 9. Direction, Dennis Robotti. Videotape correlation, Jack Rand. Left-footed kick forward here by Gross toward the full forward area. Carlton stacking the back line here, making it difficult for those uh, Blues attackers to get the ball into the target area. They clear again to the half-back line. Essendon continually into attack. They're seven points down. Here they come again. The ball is still across the centre on their half of the ground. Gould in front. Gould in front of Close. And he seems to have hurt his leg. Four to 47. 14 minutes of play left. Carlton now into attack and a break away from Croswell. Good play by him. The kids kicked it towards Kekovic. Well forward. Kekovic versus Payne. It's a two-out affair. Payne's in front. Got the ball. Long foots Kekovic nicely. And gee, Essendon fans had their uh, hearts in their throats that time. Over the weapons. Tries to break away this time. A double turn doesn't come off. A hand pass falls into the arms of Kekovic. He gets past Cross. A left foot kick by him is just about to come up. Has to change his attack. Kicks off the right boot, going over towards Pryor. Pryor in possession of the ball, clears for the line, falling towards Crane. Crane will take the mark, dropped it outside the line. Throw in, half forward flank for the Carlton team attacking the Richmond goal. Notice the soft biting the finger I wonder what the coaches are doing. It's pretty close and exciting. A goal to Essendon and they could finish up in front. 17 minutes play gone, the ball's down towards the, the centre wing, Crane is bundled out of the road, the umpire says play on, kicked off the carpet, picked up by Pryor, Pryor gets it down towards the half-forward line, but once more, another throw-in. I'll read the scoreboard at the 17-minute mark in the last quarter. Carlton lead by seven points. These sides have met three times this season, this is the fourth occasion, two wins to Essendon, one to Carlton. The big one was to Carlton in the second semi-final. This is a replay of that as the grand final over towards Silvani, former captain of the Blues. Hand pass to Crane, Crane a hand pass to Gallagher, the rover. He was injured before has his left ankle strap. A left foot kick by him despite the pain. The ball's kicked into the full forward area. Payne takes the mark. Has to play on. Touch says the umpire. That's a difficult position in which to order a play on. Taken by Gerlach, one of Essendon's best for sure. One of the best on the ground for sure. Kicks the ball across the centre wing. It beats all players off the turf. It's pretty firm out there. It's like concrete at times. And there's to be a throw in on the centre wing. It's concrete when you bounce on it. There's Clarky, the... Uh Essendon coach, he must be pretty happy at this stage. I think they're finishing on perhaps a little bit better. In Taylor's comments, to see how true they'll be shortly, as Silvani, a really great player for Carlton, will take the free kick on the half-back flank. He and Gerlach, in my book, are the two best players on the ground. Let's see how they continue on. Carlton Lee, 7-12 to 7-5, seven, seven points of difference, and late on the scene in tackling Crane, who bravely stood by to take the mark, was an Essendon player. <coughs> Who is David Shaw? Crane kicks it up towards that half forward line. Epis makes possession for it. Gets in front of uh, Jessalenko, knocks the old ball away. Jessalenko's pretty sick. Who to win it from here, Jim Taylor? Well, you've got to go for Carlton. They're in front. But Essendon, I feel, just might be finishing with that little bit extra. But now Big John, number two, is back in the rut. It might be that Carlton will come on again. He's knocked it out. Epis takes the ball with him, but he's running up towards the Carlton goal, but he gets his left foot to it. And it's kicked right along the centre wing train from the back. Great mark, young fellow. A beauty. And this is going to be his 24th kick. Who will win it for you, Alan Killigrew? I'll stay with the string, Carlton, but uh, don't underestimate Essendon. And that's sitting on the fence, but that's the way the game is at the moment. A record attendance has been established for all four finals matches. The aggregate is a record, of course. It's a record grand final crowd of 116,828. The previous record 12 years ago in the Olympic year of 1956 was 115,802. Watching on today, 116,828. As Essendon's Gosper is caught with the ball, he tried to get away with it, but Peter McLean has got it. Hand passes straight in the hands of Noonan. Noonan is grabbed. The umpire, I think, is going to pay a free kick to Noonan. And he's on the half-forward flank, plays on quickly, up towards the forward pocket, and left it! Over the top of Loft, and this youngster, 17 years of age, has already kicked three goals. Jack Clark leans back on the bench. He's too scared to watch. Jack Clark, the Essendon coach, can't watch this kick for goal. You're a bit of a materialist, Tony. You could be saying a prayer. Huh? really lives from this point on. Ten minutes of play left approximately. It wouldn't be less than ten, it could be more. And there's nothing in it. The Melbourne people come alive. They know football and they love it. And look at this, everybody's the coach now. 
Lofty tumbled in a while ago. Here we go. Nichols versus McKenzie. Negative ruck play out here onto the wing. Munari tried to bring the ball forward. Just missed it. Peter McLean bravely goes back into the pack. It's kick where you see ahead now to the forward line. Droswell just still doing well for Carlton. Takes the mark. That decision will stand. 98,800 saw the first semi-final, 106,000 saw the second, 103,000 saw the preliminary final, and another record today of 116,828. The ball is kicked forward onto the half-forward line for the Blues. The Blues into attack. Jeff Pryor, can he hold them up again? He's done it so often. Gerlach will, kicks the ball right along the line, and it's going out. The aggregate finals attendance figure is 425,727. Records created in every final and as an aggregate. These two teams played a one-point difference in the grand final 20 years ago. Let's see what today brings. A beautiful knock by Nichols goes out here towards Minari. He's hooked in the back. A free kick to Dennis Minari. And he's only 40 yards out from goal. With 21 minutes into this last quarter, you couldn't get them any closer than this. One point the difference in favour of Carlton, who are wearing the black nicks. About eight minutes of play left. We've had 22 minutes into the final term. Here he is, Dennis Minari, 45 yards out. We'll kick it right up into the scoring zone. It's a long torpedo punch kick by Munari, falling short. The ball is knocked across the line, and a valuable point goes to Carlton score. They lead by two points. Well, you can win them and lose them by a point. The coaches are the people to watch. They express all the agonies and the ecstasies of the entire game. Jack Clark in the middle of that throng. The Essendon bench will pick up Barassi soon. The ball is kicked to the half-back line. Essendon have the ball. They're in defence at the moment, and now they come into attack. They're into attack, and the crowd's on its feet. The ball to the half-forward line, a good mark. A very timely mark is taken by Collins, and bearing the scars is Gosper. Back come the Blues into attack. They're across the centre. They're onto the half-forward line on the outer side. Barassi sitting back there just can't bear it too much longer to play gone in this last quarter. Uh, Carlton lead by two points as Chandler sends him into attack again. Eppis, a great player for Eppis, has got it. He gets away around one player, runs across the base of goal, kicks it up the centre half forward and Fletcher has got it, pushed in the back. He didn't get the mark, it was a free kick and a good decision. Ball comes back to Fletcher. Fletcher kicks it wide towards the girl act. He's on his own. He's got a chance to pass it down here towards Barry Davis. He's kicked it towards the forward pocket. as a chance for Robert Walls. He ran over the ball. Picked up here by uh, Ellis. Down towards Blathen. And Blathen has got it! Look at Jack Clark! Seventeen years of age. A student doing his matriculation. He's already kicked four goals. Well, you can see the angle that he is on. It's a thread, the eye of a needle job from the boundary line for young Blethen. He's pushed it across and it's out of bounds, no score. Tell you what, it could be a better result for Essendon than a point because a point gets it back right upfield with a little bit of luck here, a snap from here and they could get a goal that would put them in front. Jack Clark shifted him, chairman of selectors Harry Hunter throw in right alongside the behind post at the western stand end the bombers into attack mckenzie need to do something good in the ruck down to grass flipped it on behind it's lost boots them out and the blues supporters come to their feet they're relieved about that they've got the run of the ball it's over here towards crane crane the chief kick winner in the game boots them forward and now it's the blues turn they still lead by two points time ticking away we've got about seven minutes of play left the ball on the half forward line for the blues it's in crane's possession he's finally run down like a rhinoceros by shaw and it's a decision against fellow after all the seven minutes to go it's two points of difference the decision was correct that was a valuable kick for quirk to win make no mistake about that davis has beaten him today quirk half forward line kicks this into the full forward pocket almost kekovic is out in front can he take the markers in the middle i think kekovic has got it players trying to talk the umpire out of his decision and it showed up pretty clearly that it was a Kekovic mark in the close-up of the television lens and two points separate the sides. The Blues a chance to go further ahead. Kekovic is 50 yards out on an angle that is certainly more than half a right angle. He'd be 60 degrees to the line. He's had 14 kicks for the game. He's had five marks. He's kicked four goals, four. And uh, as mentioned, it's 50 yards out. There's his towering torpedo punch kick going right across the goals. And I don't think it'll be any score at all. If this game is to be won or lost, it could be at this very moment, depending on what happens in the ruck at this throw-in. 
Well, there's not much left because we've just hit the time on period. And Jones versus McKenzie. McKenzie up behind. He knows how desperate it is. Knocks it across to Payne. Will Essendon get out of the trap? Tackled by Jeselenko. Payne gets his kick in. It's down here towards Shaw. Lost the ball. Didn't know where it had gone. Here's the voice of Ephes. The old experience of Ephes boots the ball back here to the centre wing. The police are out. Only seconds left. The stadium's in uproar. Free kick to Robin Close on the centre wing. And the Bombers still have a chance. There's five minutes of play left approximately. We're into the time on period. Robin Close kicks to the half forward line. Towering mark. Big Wes. Wesley put all the eggs in one basket there. If anything comes unstuck, he's man's 30 yards away, standing on his own, and it would have all been over for Carl. Wes Loss at centre half back. A drop kick which is going to take the ball up to the centre of the ground. Over it. Setting himself in front and marking it. Good mark. Here for the Carlton player, and it's Neil Chandler who came on at three-quarter time. He'll kick it out towards the half-forward line, up to the centre half-forward, looking for Peter Jones, the big fella! He's a Melbourne people roar, no matter their football. Played for 26 minutes in this last quarter. Carlton lead by two points. Jones is 40 yards out, straight in front. Above all, that's what Carlton wanted people to do for quite a while, is grab a few in the air, and that was a good mark. Jones lines the ball up. A desperate goal required. Off the side of his boot, might be out of bounds. It's out of play. Still two points separating the sides. Carlton 55, lead Essendon 53. It's 7.13 to 8.5, and we've had 27 minutes of play. McKenzie again. Ryan Harder in the ruck, knocks it over there, but Quirk picks it up. Quirk has run down, kicks the ball straight above his head. It'll be a play on call from here. No mark allowed, and McKenzie bears right down on Crane. Crane a blind turn, gets him out of trouble, keeps the ball in Carlton's position. The ball is now out of play, but only 10 yards from the nearest behind post. Nearly 28 minutes of play in the final turn. Two minutes of play left at the outside, and it's up at the Carlton end. The ball's knocked away by Nichols. Out here towards Pekovic, he's caught with it. He picked up by Coswell! One point only, three points the difference. Barassi up and down on the bench. The coaches are an absolute study. Barassi standing up in the shadows of the new pavilion. The ball over here towards Neil Evans. Evans on the back line for the Bombers. Can they come again? Have they got a last charge left? Silvani knocks the ball forward. They'll get the run of the ball again. The Blues, it's Quirk. Grabbed with the ball by Davis. Just in the nick of time. Play on Sissy Ump. Well followed up here by Robertson. He's run down by Davis. Davis is playing both of them. Gains possession of the ball. Got nobody to give it to. Bitten into the ground. The umpire's given a decision. And I think it's a ball up on the half forward line for the Blues. Fair enough. Robinson's a very silly player to be looking for free kicks here. This umpire won't give a free kick if you decapitate him. Not at this stage, neither he should. About three minutes of play left. Can the Bombers get up and win another premiership there? 13th to equal Collingwood's record. The ball's kicked out, another throw in. The coaches are just about uh, out of their minds on the coaching benches. Barassi's in that throng. Here he is standing up now. Spurring his side on. Throw in, half forward line, the Blues into attack. They still lead by a couple of points. Three points in Carlton's favour. Mackenzie in possession of the ball, couldn't get out of it. too much about skill as long as you get close scores and honest players then you'll entertain people and people were entertained here to know to a great order here this afternoon 